All right. It's a brand new year. And, you know, with all of the things that that brings, it also, we're going to spend some time thinking about last year, but not all of last year, just fall. If you want to hear our thoughts on all of last year, oh boy, howdy, do I got a thing for you coming up soon. Uh, on the 27th, which is a couple of Saturdays from now, depending on when I get this edited out, maybe it's, <laughs> maybe it's in two days. Who knows? Um, we will be having the Nut Bar Annual Anime Awards, a time-honored tradition. I think this is our six, fifth, sixth, sixth? I, I, I can check 20, my, 2018, my If If you count 2018, 2018, then it's the sixth. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, I'd give us six. Hell yeah. Uh, so we'll, we will be going through exhaustively, um, all of the anime that we watch, giving them all awards. Uh, it's a great time. I'll be streaming it live on Twitch. We'll post about it on our socials. And then I will also upload the VOD after. This is like my favorite thing that we do every year. Um, it was really long last year. Hopefully it's not as bad this year. We're taking steps to rein ourselves in, but I'm sure if you are listening to this podcast, you know that we tend to be long winded. Um, we try our best, and we make no promises about avoiding that this episode. <laughs> um, yeah, then this episode's already, it might get pretty long, because we're, we're starting and ending with two big shows. And there's some other stuff in between. This was a pretty packed season, just because a lot of stuff, there was some carryover stuff that wrapped up. There were some kind of weird one-off shows, um, and like ONAs that end up counting for this one as well. Um, so it ended up being a pretty packed little season, and that's not even including all of the like, excellent television shows that are continuing on into 2024 like Fryrin, undead unluck uh shangri-la etc etc so uh we're gonna start and this may seem strange but this technically did the finale air in the fall season and we have not formally covered this yet attack on titan small indie hit <laughs> um so final season part three for real for real, for real on god, on god. it's done it's done we're it's done over no, no more attack on titan it's done Finally, I remember in 2019 when MAPPA was like, oh, we're taking over. It's the final season. That was a lie, obviously. And here we are, whatever, four, four years, years later. later. Uh, yeah. You say 2019, but like it really started in 2020. Yeah, that, I guess The so. last season aired in 2020. It, it, December in of 2019. But, you know, here we are. It's finally done. Um, so, yeah, uh, I will start this <laughs> i will start this by saying that attack on titan was very important to me as a seasonal anime fan not like oh mine was my first anime or whatever it was not even close to my first anime but it was one of the first anime that i started watching seasonally way back in 2013 um and that was a big deal for me because it kind of got me into you know checking the chart seeing what was new and coming out so i've been on this ride the entire time um and so it is pretty insane to see it 10 years later actually come to an end uh and they like successfully adapted the whole thing so that's at least a cool accomplishment yeah and, and we're uh, technically uh, covering both of the specials here yeah because we didn't talk about the first special either just kind of conglomerate the whole ending special thing together yeah so from the the escape of the rumbling all the way to the end the this really was the end of attack on titan yeah man <laughs> yeah l l l <laughs> you sure <laughs> let, let me let me get through it okay, okay. by the way my, my I'm, I'm a little sick right now i hope it doesn't come off uh, too gross in the audio but um, i'm trying my best here so attack on titan i was not there from the very beginning like uh, uh like chris was i was there f definitely in between season one and season two but like that that season one hype was so fucking surreal they like obviously had to like jump on that train, and then uh, when season two aired, that's when like me and Chris were like fully into like our watching anime together yeah. era. That kind of kicked started. Honestly, I mean, we like st we started watching stuff beforehand a little bit, but yeah. like that that's like what like cemented it for sure. Mm -hmm. Um. So yeah, Attack on Titan, uh, very special to me, and I don't know if if we want to get into it Im immediately right now, but. I think the ending, it fumbled the landing a little bit, but regardless, I think it still hit the landing pretty well. Um, like, the whole Aaron being the villain stuff, like, I, I think it, it hits relatively well. Before I get into it, I would love to hear Tim's thoughts, because I don't yes. think, I think I've talked to you a little bit about this, but not, like, 
in depth. So I would love to hear about what the you think. Finale? Yeah, specifically how you feel about how the show ends and how it wraps up. Oh boy, where do I start? <laughs> <laughs> okay, well, first of all, I think I will more or less agree with Ron that I think it kind of nailed the ending a bit, kind of. It did fumble in quite a few places. I have a couple of gripes, especially with the whole, like, him, like, going to the past and controlling his dad. And By know, the way... Kind of, Real it, quick, but we're spoilers? probably gonna full get into. Spoilers. I think this is it's a in, review episode full spoilers. Yeah, we're 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 gonna try. We'll try to avoid to where we no. can. But honestly, yeah, it's a review episode. So just this is a season finale wrap up. You should expect a lot of spoilers. Yeah, uh, but especially for Attack of Titan, though, for sure. But um, yeah. So yeah, the whole like him being able to go back in time and he was like the one who set this whole chain up fence off with letting his mom die and making his dad inject him and all that makes it fe- really like kind of cheapen like the overall I agree. impact of the show to make it like oh it's just like all cold in the plan uh, kind of thing um, I also have rights with the whole like the whole like Koki is rip off I think I'm gonna make myself the villain and because I'm the villain everything's gonna be fine now I, like like, I don't even think I don't I don't give him that much credit I don't think that that was his plan and I think that that is kind of an ass pull from uh, Isayama. Yeah, but, Isayama. But uh, we can get into that more in a bit. Jim can continue. Um, I think the whole... I think that was poorly thought out. I think the execution was poorly out because like, I think he ended up killing like 5 billion people. And it's like... 80% of the world dead. Yeah, so... You know, normal. Isayama. I think, the, I think the, a lot of things fumbled. Wait, um, was it 80 think, or was it the other way around? Nope. 80%. 80% of the world okay. yes. gone. Right. I, I know it's majority for sure, so 80% sounds right. I do... I mean, the ending, I mean, like, the fights and stuff is always, like, you know, it's Mappo, they, they nailed it, and it was a lot of fun, and I like how... I like the final, final message they kind of ended on after, like, because uh, when Mac the tree and she died, and this is, like, two centuries later, they still show, like, oh conflict is still like you know you war is an endless war cycle is inevitable yes yeah, endless cycle you know like you can try like i kind of like this like kind of final message he ended on so there was things i do like i just feel like the ending felt really cheap by a lot of things i didn't think was necessary but at the same time i also don't know how to like wrap up attack of titan without how, how to fix the rumbling essentially um, I think Attack on Titan peak really hit the stride at the end of season three Agreed. and season four onward was like kind of fumbling his way through like, how do I end this series? I think, I don't know. So I agree wholeheartedly. I think if I could just choose to recommend how to have someone watch Attack on Titan, I would tell them to stop after season three. Um, I don't agree. But what sucks is that there's a lot of really good stuff in the season four uh Stu- uh, like episodes leading up to the finale um the problem is that they are all servicing a narrative that i think ultimately kind of just fails and doesn't work um but there's a lot of really great scenes and really great stuff in season four um it's kind of a shame it's a little bit like uh game of thrones season six where it the lead up there's some great episodes individually but it's building towards something that ends up ultimately being kind of bad um I think, like Tim said, the visuals and the spectacle of the finale were the best part. I think it looked and sounded incredible. Um, the emotional moments, I think the only reason they were even able to hit, um, despite me thinking that the writing was kind of shitty, was because the like presentation was so good. However, I just really hate the end of the story. I don't like Aaron's characterization. I think it's extremely convoluted. I think that he wrote himself into a hole and wasn't really able to write himself out. Um, I think that Aaron is a terrible character. I think Mikasa's characterization is a little bit let down because of how bad Aaron of a, or bad of a character Aaron ends up being. Um, I just don't find it particularly interesting that they felt the need to kill. I don't know. I think the rumbling is a bit of a silly plot device. I thought it initially and it only kind of got worse as it continued to get executed. It's been a while at this point since we've watched the finale. So I think I had fresher thoughts on this immediately. But what I'm saying is hardly, like, a unique opinion. Plenty of people have been complaining about this since the manga ended. And they did a pretty faithful adaptation to the manga, from what I can tell. I think 
something that really annoyed me while watching the finale that that's, you were, like reminding me of was like as Aemon was killing billions of people, like all the like court cast people were like, "Oh yeah, Aemon's still our friend. We can just talk to him." You know, not the everything would be all right. Like it was just like they were just kind of cast it aside, and it felt really like disjointed for like them to be like, "Oh, I still believe in Aemon despite all him killing billions of people." I don't know. It's the thing, and I think it like lowered Mikasa's opinion just because how like this like last act specifically like really nailed in like, "Oh, she's just like." Eamon's kind of like love interest and that's her like driving force and that was like that's all she kind of amounts to I think her core kind of conflict like, where she had to realize that she would have to kill him at the end was at least interesting in isolation but yeah uh, but up until know. that she was yeah. like oh I love Eamon kind of not I a character for most of season yeah. 4 yeah personally um, Mikasa was never that cool to begin with Ooh. I do not also, agree I think she was any, a much better character in the earlier seasons any like I always thought she was always going to come back in the season one, and then when she does come back, she was like not even really a character. And also that whole romance with Andy and Armin. Oh, I don't mind that. Field. Nah, I think that's fine. I, I that I wasn't. I, 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 I have no complaints about that. Either. I thought it was. I cute. mean, it's a very very minor complaint, but it's still like that should. I don't think it should have been there. Oh well. Um, I personally I, think that the rumbling is actually well, not the rumbling itself, but like Aaron's characterization is actually pretty well thought out. Because, like, a good villain is meant to be controversial, right? That's... And okay, I'll let you keep talking. Sorry. If a, uh, a villain's motivation being controversial, like, I think that that's, like, a, a good sign of writing, personally. Okay, that like, is it, horseshit, but I, that's okay. Because it, 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 it keeps people talking about it, you no, know? No, what the hell are you talking about? That... <laughs> Just because... <laughs> People thinking that a, a villain's motivations are bad writing doesn't mean it's good writing. What? How does that argument mm, uh, make well, like, any sense? No, 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 Chris, Chris, Chris. That's the thing, though. It's not. It's not necessarily bad writing, because like there, there's just so many, so many different layers to like Aaron's characterization. It's not that complicated. Like, it, 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 no, like not not just Aaron though. Like it, it's like Amir, you know, like uh, uh, like how free w was Aaron truly? You know, like, how, how much of uh, in control was he in, in actuality? I think that that was a... If that had been planned from the beginning of the series... Which I, I think it is. I do not... I And Tim can go one way or the other and let me know. I, do, I emphatically do not agree. I do not think Attack on Titan, the narrative, was written with that ending in mind. I think he decided on it around season two or three. Maybe no, a little bit deeper. In three. many interviews, Isimah said, like, he had the exact ending from the beginning. That is possible, but also writers lie about that shit all the time. J.K. No, Rowling like, famously I mean, like, lies say, about he it. He did say that like he like oh I was kind of like locked into this ending from the beginning. Then he didn't do a very good job of setting it up. So I don't yeah. think Aaron's characterization in the early seasons matches his characterization in the end at all. There's a lot of good video essays out there, and like uh, I I watched like a, a ton of them. And I'm like I I agree with a lot of it. Okay, well that doesn't necessarily substitute a real opinion. I I just I want to put it's fine if you like the characterization and it's fine if you think that it works better but I really want to push against saying something like because it's controversial that must mean it's good that's ridiculous no. <laughs> I just, the, the, it, it came off a little weird but like Rhetor I'm just, I have rhetorical issues with that it has nothing yeah. to do with Attack on Titan it's just, right 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 um but I just I don't know I it it got so over the top I was I, I kind of ceased to be able to care about the real consequences that were happening because it became a little bit like disaster porn at a certain point and I just that I don't think is always the most effective way to get across a message. I think that they really were especially at the first special part. Man, they really wanted to rub it in. They were like, yeah, look at all these that, people that, getting that really was. annihilated and you're like Yep, our protagonist is doing that, and that's probably not very good. I don't know. I mean, like, Aaron stopped being the protagonist pretty much at the start of season four. I and I know, and I just think that they didn't do a very good job of switching that over. And I know, I mean, it. like, they did though, because like with uh, the whole beginning of season four was uh, Reiner's perspective in the whole uh, uh, fuck, well, well that the, that other country, like, it, it, yeah, it switching Marley. to that perspective, yeah. Marley. Like so switching over to to the Marley perspective, I don't know. Like, uh, I think Attack on Titan had themes that it was going for in the first three seasons that it c 
kind of just dropped in pursuit of the greater narrative about Marley in season four. And then they were kind of going for some other themes that I thought were really interesting. I really like the Marley arc. I like the kids. I like Falco and uh, Gabby and how they're introduced um, and sort of how it talks about indoctrination and the cycle of violence over time. There's a lot of good thematic stuff that Attack on Titan's working with, but none of them has to do with Aaron, who I think is a terrible character, unfortunately. Yeah, and like that, that's why I say like I don't. I think it's reductionist to say skip the final season. Like I think no, you should I was, watch the I'm, whole thing. I'm not being serious. I think I think you can watch the whole thing. Just know that maybe it it might not be to your taste. Um, so I, I think watching like the whole thing, like not necessarily like binging it all all at once, but like continuous instead of like you know waiting year to year. I I think that that's probably like the ideal way to consume it. Yeah, I mean, it's yeah, but still a very popular everything. and like famous work and i think it's you know deserves its place but it's also hard it's hard to write a big long story like this yeah. there are very few that actually manage to be consistently good all the way through and even even the early season like a season one this the back half is not amazing right um, so yeah no i i i still think the like the it, it manages to land the uh, uh the ending it fumbles a little bit here and there but like i i think this uh finale like cements Attack on Titan as like an anime classic that like most people should watch. I would like, absolutely it, give you like anime classic, you know, shonen classic deserves to be in the repertoire. If anyone starts giving me greatest anime of all time considerations, I will laugh them out of the room. I will be honest. I don't know how you feel about that one. At least one. Um, I, it's not in my top ten, like nowhere near my top ten, but like yeah. probably like in my top twenty five. Um, I might give it top. 50 if i was basing it more off of cultural impact and less on quality but that's a completely different conversation yeah. any more thoughts tim before we move on i think we're, we've milked this um i would probably put top 100 um i'm still a little hung up on one's like villain a good villain. we don't have to worry about that <laughs> it's okay don't have to worry about <laughs> this, is, this is really bothering me because <laughs> it's how wrong it sounds anyway uh it's okay maybe i'll cut it out um all right we're moving on. No more Attack on Titan. We're putting it to bed, just like Aaron got put to bed because he died. Um, okay. And now we're moving on to the real heat of, of, of the series, <laughs> yeah. of, of the season. To, to, on a Kana completely Joe different Mo, note. Kanajo season two, baby! Let's go! Alright. I really wish, I really wish this wasn't airing in the same season as, as Hyakano, the 100 girlfriends that really, 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 really love you. Because, man... It really just knocks it out of the water. <laughs> I don't necessarily agree. I mean, it, it's the same kind of concept, but like he kind of takes it in a lot more like parody vibes and is a lot more yes. diverse in its gags and jokes. While like kind of Joe kind of Joe is stays with his more niche, but it like hits the jokes like hard and heavy. It it does it. it... And, like, because it's just, like, the four characters, like, it, you're able to, like, develop them further and further. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I like how, like, he kind of has a hundred girlfriends, so obviously he can't spend, like, forever developing each one of them. But, like, I like the, well, I guess we'll get to that later. But, like, he, he does give some development, but ne not nearly as much as, like, the Kanjima Kanjima. It's not something that you really miss out on, mm -hmm. you notice, when you can watch these shows side to side. I think this season did a really good job growing out the... Uh, the cast from last season, especially like the two minor girls kind of in the background and kind of showed up a little bit towards the end and they, they really feel a lot more flushed out. No, yeah, uh, they're, they're definitely part of the harem now. Yeah, well, kind of. Kind of. Asterix. Well, because uh, the... Fuck, I already forgot her name. The white hair girl. The, uh, your, Shiro. Your, your girl. Yeah, my girl. Rei Takahashi. Like, she, th this was... Th that whole back half was like her arc and like her like finally accepting her feelings. Mm -hmm. And she, fucking, she was the first one to get a kiss in. Holy shit. Not expecting that. What? No, no she didn't. Yeah, she was the first one to get the kiss. The blue hair girl We're got in the first season kiss. two, and they're all like a poly quadruple, and they hasn't hey, been a it's kiss a, yet. It's a very wholesome romance. I don't know what you're talking about. Um, why no, are they, wholesome. Logan, why are they watching this shit, man? <laughs> but but it's, it's finally happened uh, after 20 episodes. Wow. 
No, I think Minasa got a kiss last season. That's why Sakitake needed a kiss because no, no, the, that was the didn't. whole. That was literally the whole point of the season. Is yeah, because Sakitake didn't get a kiss, but Minasa did already. So there was a kiss. No, M- Minasa never got one. She, she like did. she uh, she no literally the the last episode she's like, man, I got no development here. We'll fact that's, check that's this what she and said. get back to you. We'll, please, we'll fact please check. move on. <laughs> anyway, uh, I I I, I want to re- read the manga of this. I, w- I want to catch up. I like, was I, a little. I, yeah, you wanna you wanna read the manga? I wanna read the manga because uh, I don't think they confirmed like a season three yet. They did not. Um, I will say I was a little bit worried, especially with these kind of shows that like the one the one gag shows that they'll get pretty dry um, after a while, especially mm-hmm. in season two. But I think with the the growing like cast that they're having, that they kept it really fresh and it was still very enjoyable. Yeah, yeah. yeah well, watch the show if you if you like harems. It, it's fun. Okay, Logan, please. Speak. Tell yeah, us. Tell speak, us about this next boy, anime. Speak. Uh, so Zom One Hundred um, was was it technically this? Season it started in the or... summer and we had to delay it but because it didn't... Yeah, yeah, yeah. So it was a summer it was anime that we were. Reading, I couldn't. Yeah. I couldn't remember when the delay happened. Right. Uh, yeah. So Zom One Hundred. Uh, I think this was a really nice show. Um, very solid production values. Uh, and um, I, I'm sure that we're going to have some words about how that final arc went down. But um, especially given, you know, the last time an anime took an extended break and then came back with a finale uh, being Wonder Egg priority. I think that they did a much better yeah, job with they this. They passed the test. I, 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 was, I was very worried when they're like, we're going to delay, but don't worry, it's coming back. And I was like, I've been hurt before by that. <laughs> At least this is like a manga uh, that's being adapted and not an original project like Wonder Egg. But yes, I, I get it. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I thought that this was pretty excellent just all the way through. I think this is probably going to be a lot of people's one of one of people's favorites. I know a lot of people are big fans of the manga. And it was just really cool to see a manga like this get such an incredible adaptation, like like stellar visuals, wonderful voice acting performances. It is hilarious the colors just rule the visual design rocks there was a fucking shark <laughs> with legs sticking out of it and shark they fought zombie. it oh my god just a, just a sort of anime episode. peak um for my my year personally um just one of my also just one of the best zombie stories i've seen i think i think mm-hmm. this show fixed zombie fatigue um in a way that like obviously not that the zombie fatigue has been a culturally relevant thing for a couple of years but um it like zombies is such a played out and overdone genre and this really just kind of took all of your tropes that you expect and you know went along and subverted them in a lot of interesting ways and it just it made it about fun and zombies mm-hmm. aren't usually very fun what was the yeah, last it made it about fun and it also made it really fun to watch i'm talking about zombies know. in media in general not just in anime. sure yeah because sure. i don't think i've seen a zombie oh well, i guess zombie land saga, zombie land like, saga that's not, but that doesn't count what, that, that <laughs> yeah count. that's not a real zombie <laughs> yeah like is it like only like high school of the dead that's a zombie oh, anime high school of the dead uh, and there's like a one romance one that's blanking in my head anyway sakura or something like that um, so what do you guys think of the last four episodes? Because apparently a lot of people really did not like it. I don't think that the villains are very good. I think that they are over the top and that I, I hate villains of that archetype of the like, I'm going to watch the world burn because I'm upset. I think it's pretty flimsy and a little shallow, but I think that if you kind of look at them as a plot device for to unfold the last couple of episodes, I can just kind of roll my eyes and ignore it for the most part. So it didn't ruin the show or anything. I I did think it was a little stupid. Um, also, I think that this guy, this author, really likes fubs. And man, I did not like the one guy that was harassing the main girl. Um, the ugly bastard. No guy. defense. Uh, absolutely no defense for that fub. But I think the other three I didn't mind so much. Um, I I mean, you there say were three it was other over the top, but. No, there were not three the other fubs. The there were three four other squad villains of villains. In the the final bad arc. villains yeah. oh, Although sure, honestly, sure, sure, sure. I think there were three other fubs somewhere in this manga, but I'm not gonna. Uh, yeah. Anyway, I, I think there was just one. It was just a <laughs> manga, boss, dude. Yeah. yeah. Anyway. Uh, but anyway, the the what what I was saying is that um, I think the other three. I don't know. You say that they were over the top, but like 
what in Zombie Land or Zom One Hundred was not over the top. I think my like, beef it, is it, mainly a, with the main dude and not necessarily his cronies who are cronies and therefore don't have as much development anyway. Um, <laughs> I don't know. I I just didn't really mind how things went down with the last dude. Like I wasn't I wasn't expecting you know deep and meaningful introspective character work out of this. This hasn't been what Zom One Hundred was so. If they want to give me, you know, a goofy ass, ha ha, I'm going to kill them all, villain, that it seems more appropriate here than it is in a lot of places where they try to stick that guy in. They just felt really just, like, cartoony to me. I think they were introduced literally just to have a villain that wasn't yeah. zombies, and I do not think it, that there was much more it, thought put in. It felt very superficial, and it really felt like, the author would just put just, them there that be forced, like an opposite yeah. of the main characters. So about the whole like the, they have the hundred things I yeah. want to do and they have a hundred things to do, but it's like bad things. And then they each have like their own like two minutes like backstory of why they're miserable. The, yeah, why miserable and they're just like really cartoony thing. I'm okay with the cartoony thing because the show has been pretty cartoony, but like the show has also been able to do like really like heartfelt scenes as well. Yeah, and I feel like I their think... character writing could have been far better i think it's just shallow i don't think it's bad i think it is executed well enough in the end to not be that big of an issue for me i just think that compared to a lot of the rest of it it is a little bit it's it's like tim said they just wanted they he had the idea to do like ah evil bucket list of the dead and then that is kind of where it ends but anyway to me i was able to i i remember telling y'all when we first got to the start of that arc before the the break or whatever um being like man i really don't like mm -hmm. this villain i hope this doesn't ruin the end of the show and i can safely say for me at least i thought the execution they were very fun episodes of them saving the village mm -hmm. i also was pretty convinced that the village was not going to get saved so the fact that they ended up like successfully saving it i think I, alleviates a lot yeah, of that, that surprised me too <laughs> so <laughs> Juan hasn't talked much about this. Do you have anything about Zom? Uh, no, you, I mean, you guys pretty much got it. Like, the, this is a very fun zombie show. Uh, I, I like it a lot. And I, I do want to shout out the opening, going from really bare bones and then becoming, like, probably one of the best OPs of the season. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Like, oh, it's so fun. It's so, such I don't a know fun if that OP. was intentional or not. No, it was definitely not intentional. But it worked but out. Like, it, yeah. it worked out. <laughs> but I still thought we should be praising them to be like, I'm so glad you guys did a half-ass opening at the start, and then did a proper one later on. Yeah, hey, man, kind of designing, making an anime is hard for a new studio. I will. I do think it's really funny that they made such a big deal about shitting all over their previous company and then had a ton of production issues, but that's <laughs> a little bit of hypocrisy that we don't have to focus in on. And I really hope the Bug <laughs> Films team like makes more stuff, because at the end of the day, this was a great project with a ton of soul, and mm -hmm. I want to see more shows like this so yeah i'd love to see them tackle like an original show yeah um any more thoughts on zom i think this is i, I this is worth the wait the i i think at least and and still ends up being one of the highlights 100 okay. yeah, percent yeah i would uh, definitely it's definitely still a good show and i would really recommend it i do think the finale did damping my enjoyment a little bit but it, at the end of the day, it's still not as much as an on titan at least um okay dark wow. gathering wow. Uh, unfortunately, uh, we saw up to episode 12 and we were falling behind on anime, so we decided to drop it after the first core. We being everyone in this call that's not Tim. Um, yes. So we can talk about our thoughts on the beginning of it, and then we'll give Tim the mic to finish it off, I think. Um, yeah. I, like I said, I could have easily continued watching this. I think it was totally... Oh, me too. Yeah, it was like a perfectly good show. We were just getting really behind. Um, mm -hmm. And this is like the weakest of the shows that we were watching with Mark. So. Um, I kind of regret dropping I this one over think, Hulk, personally. Oh, I like Hulk. I, I think Hulk is weaker, honestly. But. Uh, I think that this show does a couple of things really well, and then most everything else is kind of bland and not very good. Um, but it really is one of the more effective horror anime that I've seen in a long time. Like It, it manages to do the unnerving, scary thing um, really well. I like the main girl character. I think she is very well done. Um, I think watching her fight is very cool. I like uh, watching her have the mastery over the ghosts is really cool. Everything about her rules. The main character is a sack of wet like, sand or whatever. And I typically don't like the show when he's the focus. I think that he is fine and he got a little bit better as the show went on. Um, but 
I, I think if he was better written, then the show would have been more appealing to me. Or if literally if it was just about the girl <laughs> and maybe she had a different sidekick. I don't know. Um, but maybe that got fixed later on. Um, so that was kind of my impression. Just a, a neat little horror. Well done. Probably worth finishing. I, I do got to say, like, the, uh, some of the horror aspect, it was, like, really good. Because, like, it actually, like, got me at, at a couple points here and there. I'm I like, oh, shit. That was spooky. Maybe we should try to binge the rest of this before the award show, just so we can have it on the list. We could try, but, like, eh, we'll, see. We'll, we'll see. But, yeah, no, the, uh, if you're in, into horror, th- this is definitely, like, one of the better horror sh- uh, anime out there. For sure. And, like, I, I, I definitely want to give it, like, another shot someday. I can't remember the last good horror show we got before this. Miracle? I would not no, consider Miracle to be a good, a good show. horror show. How, how, <laughs> how after you read the manga one, could you say that with a Dude, straight Mir- face? Dude, the Miracle manga? Holy shit, it's so fucking it's good. excellent. Anyway. Cool. Uh, uh, Tim, was there anything in the second half that we missed out on? Um, yeah, I mean, I think the second part really, like, gave the show a purpose. Because at the beginning, it was just... Like we, you know, they all, they had always nailed down the whole like spooky atmosphere, which is like good because it's a horror show, and that's like the number one thing they should do. But they it really didn't have a good sense of direction of where the story was going. They were just like going to random places and like hunting things. But like I think Act Two really set the tone for the show to be like, okay, we have a goal of being this guard, and we have to obtain the like eight ghosts, S rank ghosts to be them. And I think it kind of. It felt the show felt a lot more purpose. It felt more enjoyable. I also think the horror elements were better. There was some like really creepy scenes, um, especially with um that main chick. She had one with oh the the very normal the, girl, the the totally normal, not psychotic girl at all. Um, had a lot of good scenes. Also, the main girl had her own like solo arc too. So if you wanted more for her, like, I think they like you know they did a lot of variety. They they like did part one but better so does this cool. adapt really the whole manga or is it no absolutely okay. not okay. there's so much it actually stops like right before they like do combat damn i bet that Crazy. i got a lot there's been a lot of shows in fall in particular just kind of end <laughs> that don't they don't even make an effort to like tie anything into a bow which is a little unfortunate but uh, I was really hoping for a season two announcement for this, but like maybe we'll get it. Yeah, later. TBD might be a cool manga to check out though. Um, yeah, maybe maybe I'll read it. Okay, Doctor Stone New World Part Two. Um, gonna keep this one a little brief. I think. Uh, it's just more Doctor Stone. If you've been enjoying the story, I think this is one of the better seasons so far. I think it was really truly a cool change of pace to kind of see them do the zelda what is that island called in in breath of the wild the one where you lose all your shit yeah fuck whatever if if you know what i'm talking about you know what i'm talking about where they essentially have to kind of reset and build from scratch because they get ambushed and everyone gets turned to stone at the beginning um watching them navigate that difficult like segment was quite cool and what having a no like a new proper villain was really cool it was just a an excellent season i had a lot of fun with it yeah i actually i think i definitely enjoy this more than the sukasa arc because like the sukasa arc it just felt like generic shonen and like kind of forgot the science aspect and this one this one it had like a perfect balance between mm. the two and then like even like the final battle between senku and the villain like senku actually getting to like quote unquote fight was yeah. really cool Thank so, uh, uh, i do uh, i, I have always that. loved that fight yeah uh, Logan, uh, since you read the manga, like, how was it uh, adapted? Uh, I mean, it was adapted about as well as Dr. Stone usually is. Um, I, I consider it like kind of an on-par anime adaptation, and I think that they you know, did a solid job. They didn't, they didn't bring the material down at all. Right. So. Mm-hmm. Yeah, mm-hmm. it was good. I don't know if Too many else. thoughts? That whole post-Stone thing was like a 30-second speed run, wasn't it? What do you what mean, mean post stone thing? You were talking about how you like they, they did the Zelda thing where they like got reset after we got turned to stone. They only oh, did yeah, you mean like, like uh like Senku like three minutes? Ch- well, I mean like he had to like choose who had to uh, he had to revive first. I am talking about the beginning of the season when everyone in the ship gets turned to stone and the small group escapes with the uh, portable truck. That's what I'm talking oh, about. Where they, yeah, it, yeah, it yeah. felt for like the first time in a while where. 
the heroes did not have all the resources that they typically have at hand and they really had to get creative with how to do it like the 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 odds were very much stacked against them and i the show hadn't felt like that in a while so that's what i'm talking yeah. about i kind of missed the season one stuff where they got creative and like spent a lot of time like coming up and inventing technology because it really feels like yeah. last season well this is a more last part like, of this part where it's PvP like focused oh, I need arc. yeah. It felt more like Shonen Arc, but it it felt really like oh, we need this technology, and then they like speed run ten seconds. They have it immediately. I think while in season one it would yeah. take them like three episodes. I think and to me yeah, go ahead. I was just gonna say I think next season will be a lot more like that based on the how this one ended. Well, considering they're gonna wrap up the entire series, I think it's gonna be a lot more speed running as well. It but just like depends to on me, how many episodes we get. That that whole like them figuring out how to build shit and taking that time was what set Dr. Stone apart from all the other shonens. And now it it kind of felt like it lost its its charm about it. What made it special? I think the cast still does like a lot of the carrying to like make the show good, but I kind of wish they spent a little bit more time on the inventing part. We'll see. Yeah. Um, still I good. Also, I'll mention I'll bring this a little bit again later, but I also have a problem with the thing being like very silly and gaggy. Where like, oh, we're gonna have this big face off with the guy on the ship, but then the guy, then the, what's his name, Magma steals the gun and runs off with it. Oh, that so, part, like, yeah. I'm gonna be, I don't know, as silly. I think it's. I just silly. think that's how Doctor Stone fun, is tone wise. I but, think that's just how it's always been, and that's kind of what I expect. It's never gonna be a hundred percent like super serious. It felt like, but it didn't feel like it felt like. It went out of the way to do it. It didn't feel natural, kind of. Like eh, I felt. I like... just think that's how Doctor Stone is to me. It didn't feel out of place. Um. Okay, we're gonna move on. Uh. Next up is Hoshi's Kuzu Telepath. Um. How did y'all find this one? This show. It starts off very cutesy, just just typical like gay girls doing cute things kind of show, and then uh, it the middle of the show it like starts to pivot into really focusing into the bottle rocket science. And you can tell that the author is like really into this subject, and it's kind of cool. It's it's really cool to like actually like see that passion. And then the girls fail, and then the the last third of the show is just so fucking dramatic and serious of like trying to fix this broken friend group. Like Chris, like you and I were watching it, and we we're like, uh -huh. "What the fuck is happening?" Yeah, it gets a little intense. For I want to like for how fluffy the first couple of episodes are, you would not think. And especially like the disposition of how the main character is. She is like a extremely shy, like overly polite character. And so you it is interesting to see that have conflict introduced to a bunch of extremely bubbly, like cute girls doing cute things characters. It's not anything like new or original, like as far as the character dynamic. Like, you know, club shows have club show drama. But it is done very well. Um and yeah, I I did bottle ro or uh, model rocketry in like middle school, so it was kind of cool seeing them do it. I was like, oh yeah, I build a uh, that's a that's a B engine. I know what a B engine is. <laughs> um, so it was it's it's cute. Uh, it's also one of the more Yuri shows that this year. Um, thankfully, like I can so say so Yuri, but like also kind of not. It's bait. Unfortunately, there is no Appa it's, no. It, apparently, it does get Yuri later on. I've heard the in the, the, the manga. manga I've heard the manga yeah. is a real Yuri eventually, Ooh. and I think the I think the end was pretty unambiguously romantic. The way that the last episode uh, portrayed them. Yeah. Um, so yeah, um, but I also wouldn't say go watch this Yuri for like the ten second of Yuri. Yeah, it end. was cute, yeah. and if you like cute girls being. You're, you know, if you like getting Yuri baited, go for it. But it was a cute club show outside. Also, of if that. you like model rockets, yeah, exactly. Um, did Did you guys like the last four episodes where it got super serious? Yeah, I thought it yeah, was pretty no, good. I actually like really enjoyed it. You like it more than the the cutesy things. Or Definitely, I was getting a little yes. bored of the first couple of episodes. Yeah, honestly. like the first like fluffy episodes, I'm like, this is very generic. I, it I, picked I, up I'm when they started actually doing club stuff. They basically once the red haired girl gets introduced, I think the show improves a lot. Mm -hmm. um, but like now that the uh, drama is over like I can't I don't really know where it goes from here I just want them to tell us if the girl's a fucking alien or not I don't know if we're ever gonna get there <laughs> That's we never be, found out uh, 12 yeah, episodes well it's cause it's not that far into the manga yet but yeah, yeah. Uh, is she an alien Logan do you think she's an alien or do you think she's faking I'm it? pretty sure she's an alien she's got like telepathy or something right she could just be uh, forehead telepathy okay 
a lot of people seem to believe she has forehead telepathy. There's so there I'm is not. some weird unexplained shit that happens in the show, and that enough is to go or is enough to go off of that makes me think that maybe she's I, I, a real I think alien. she's an alien, yeah. All right. Logan, would you like to tell us about how you felt about Shy? Um so Shy was pretty cool. <laughs> <laughs> the drop off somebody there. else please introduce this show uh, I, just to I don't know if i can do better than you i just wanted to fish it because you like the manga i'll say this because i think I, i'm probably a strong defender especially looking at this fucking 6.7 on mal ridiculous um i thought this was pretty cool i'm a little surprised it's like not as well rated as it was um this is a very unique interesting superhero show that you really don't like see much out of this genre like aside from the obvious big elephant in the room that I'm not going to mention, um, I think that it that Shy herself is a great, compelling main character. I think that they did a pretty good job going into like focusing on the emotional beats and the interpersonal issues as the driver of the conflict. Um, because it's 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 very you know Precure slash Miraculous Ladybug, depending on what side of the hemisphere you're on, uh, <laughs> doing the like let's solve their emotional problems because that's causing the that's what the villain is using to turn them into villains or whatever. Um, I like the cast a lot. It was sweet, uh, good vi- de- like decent enough visuals too. Didn't fail in that regards. Uh, overall pretty mm-hmm. cool, pretty cool little anime. I just wish the 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 pace of the second half was yeah, not that slow down a little bit. it slowed down a lot mm-hmm. like a lot it's been like five hour. episodes on the Papesha versus mom fight yeah that's so to be much fair, some of the best episodes in the show there are was, like yeah there was a lot of compelling character drama in there but i do agree with one that it went on at least a bit too long i i, I will agree i think the pacing and kind of the, the whole like purpose of the first season felt kind of like all over the place like we can we have a firm grasp of what the show was heading and like what it was like choosing to focus on and that's kind of my biggest complaint about it but i will i do like think it has some really like it has some like eight out of ten moments but i think like the whole show as a whole kind of felt like more like a s- kind of six out of ten just because with whole i, I don't know the first half seven. <laughs> the first yeah. half was like She's randomly safe doing hero things and having tuna conflicts, and then we spent five episodes on the mom, and it's kind of like, yeah, where is this show kind of going? And I, I can kind of see why people are kind of like, I get the just... pacing issue complaints. I am still excited to watch season two, which has been announced because I'm excited. I think this show could get a lot better depending on how the narrative uh, mm. chooses to go. So I will be excited to watch season two. I yeah, think. I'm, I'm definitely like intrigued enough to like still check out season two and still read the manga. Mm-hmm. Yeah, and season two they're mm-hmm. introducing the, the rest of the villains, yeah. so hopefully they're more interesting. Oh, I do like the clown guy. That's what I got about that. Mm-hmm. That was a fun. You mean clown girl? Surprise. Clown girl. Yeah. Oh, I loved her. I thought she is that kind she... of character that I think some people might find inc- extremely grating. I usually find them extremely grating, <laughs> but she she actually nails that type of character and the slapstick. And that is rare. I will give credit where credit is due. I I do really like her. As- and a lot, but she did kind of feel a bit out of place when we're having she was extremely like, out of place, which, which, made her, which made her much funnier to me, at least. But yeah, it, yeah. Um. All right. Now we're gonna talk about Tear Moon. Uh. Yeah. Uh. I, I, I'm. I'm taking a lot of this from our friend Mark, who read, I think, these books. Mm-hmm. Uh. This I don't think was a very good adaptation. Unfortunately, yes. I have not read the books. Um. But apparently they cut out a lot of content. The animation was pretty flat. There were some truly awful CGI horses that I will not talk about. Um, which kind of horses kind of sucks because otherwise this is a pretty good little anime. Um, like mm-hmm. I wish it didn't look like wet ass half the time. Um, because otherwise <laughs> it was like it was fine. Uh, I I mm-hmm. enjoyed the premise a lot more than I thought I would. I thought it was pretty funny. Um, uh, from time to time. I think that it spends a lot of time on the romance triangles of 12 year olds and like, and I wish it spent less time at school and more time doing the political yes. drama thing, which I think it does doing the bit, the main bit, which is that uh, Mia Luna gets away with everything on accident <laughs> and stumbles into the right answer. And then mm-hmm. everyone praises her genius is always funny. Mm-hmm. And they could just keep doing that. Uh, I don't know. I wish that this looked better. Yeah. 
<laughs> it was okay. I'm sure the books are better. Mm hmm. I, this is, this, yeah, this is an adaptation. Like, you know, I was talking about Dr. Stone earlier as an adaptation that isn't necessarily like, you know, high class, but it doesn't lower the material at all. This felt like it was dragging down the material in like, you know, some very visible ways, like the CG horses and also in just some like tiny stuff. Like you remember at the beginning when we were like when she wakes up in her bed and for some reason she's in like her full dress in yeah. her bed and we were making fun of that. Yeah. Apparently that doesn't happen in the manga. Apparently she's like wearing night normal pajamas in the manga. Weird. And that <laughs> it's just like a, a weird little tiny thing that the, the what's it called? The animators weren't paying attention to or whatever. And um yeah, it's a shame because I like this better. Well, I don't know if I like it better than than Baccarina, but I like it, you know, in a slightly different way. I like that it has like a bit more of a, you know, kind of bite to it because Mia is actively more of a jerk than Katarina ever was. And so there's there's still some of that like, you know, she's she's very selfishly trying to preserve herself. And sometimes she does the right thing, and sometimes she accidentally does the right thing. But she's not, like, actively the nicest person in the world no, but in the there's way some, that Katarina is. There's some real character development that happens in the yes. in the beginning parts mm -hmm. and, like, throughout the show. And I think that that is nice mm -hmm. to see. But I don't and know. And that's, that's character development that they can afford because the main character started off yeah, as, as kind a, of as a proper ass. <laughs> um, mm -hmm. Oh, well. Too bad. Tim, did you have any thoughts on this one before we move on? Uh, not really. This would generally be a show that I would watch and not even bring up at the podcast. But since we just kind of ended up watching it, chose to watch it, then yeah, I think like, I want to say the episode one was very strong. That's that's I think a big reason why mm -hmm. we started watching it is because it, it did kind of hook us. I agree. The guillotine yeah. was a lot of fun, yeah. but like, but, but if you're fun. interested, I, in I this, cannot just recommend read this. Yeah, it was, it's a light novel, I think. But yeah, I would I would try to find the source material it's, before. It's Oh, it's both. Okay, yeah. Mm -hmm. All right. I believe that is going to start uh, the Tim Power Hour. So uh, take it away. All right. I had to cut down my list quite a bit, so uh, I not have a lot to talk about. But oh, I let's will... let me, let's preface this. Sorry, these are all the shows that only Tim watched, and none of the rest of us on the podcast watched. <laughs> there we go. All right. Let's start with Atarashi and Yusuke San. Both of them. Um, both really cute, really wholesome, kind of like healing shows. Uh, highly recommend both of them. Uh, even though Yusuke had that sub fiasco, but like it was great. It's afterwards. fixed, yeah. Um, Deadbound Deathplay Part Two. Uh, I mean, it's the Duara guy and Bakuno. He has the lush cast, and it started off a little bit rough. We really didn't know where things were going, but it, I I think Part Two kind of sealed, fixed things up, and kind of like had. We've kind of found where every other camp smashed it. It was fun. It was good. Um, is do you think? Hold on, real quick on Dead Mount. Yeah. Do you think it is worth going through the whole anime, or is this something that I should just go read the manga for as a fan of Narita's other stuff? Because I wasn't uh, like in love with Episode One. I thought it was okay when we first watched it way back in the day. Like the the, the main problem I had with Death Mount was just like it just felt confusing. Like I didn't really know what the point of the like, what everyone's purpose was, it kind of felt like there were, like, eight different alignments, and we didn't really know how they meshed together. Okay. And that's where Kartu kind of fix. Um, without reading the manga, I can't really say you should just go read the manga, but I guess, like, the anime wasn't, like, amazing. So I guess you could just go ahead and read the manga. But, I don't know. I'm interested to see if you guys had that, like, same complaint about the chaos if you read it. Mm -hmm. Um, Kage Season 2 was just like Season 1. Um, it still remains, like, the peak what i want out of an isekai it was just a lot of fun just like self-aware fun it's just like great um miki the dolly was like really <sighs> weird and unhinged it turned from this like weird kind of gag comedy thing in the first couple episodes to like this weird murder mystery detective thing and it, it like they did a complete 180 and got really serious um a wild ride very unique um i think it ended well and was good. MF Ghost still remains to the point where like I really don't care too much about the story or the characters or anything going on, but like the racing scenes, which is like 
to be fair, most of the show is still like immaculate. And even as someone who's like never seen racing or initial D or like not into that kind of stuff, it still had me on the edge of my toes. So, uh, despite the bad CGI, I think it's still uh, it was still good. Uh, Overtake is also another racing things, but it does like the complete opposite where it, it doesn't really focus as much on the racing, but it focuses a lot more on the character writing and it does a phenomenal job at the character and also like how they draw and like showcase all that stuff um might be a little more relevant now after the tsunami things but uh definitely kind of a hidden gem of the season i would say um on the ninja um if i thought Mickey the dally was weird on the ninja is like next level weird and i don't know um how do you even describe my ninja? It's it's weird and it's not afraid to do crazy things like kill off certain important characters or like turn people into talking cats and it's like it's weird and unhinged and not like anything and I kinda wanna see where the show is going, but it kinda just stopped at a very like big turning point. Um Watashi no Oshi Akiyaki Reijo was the other Yuri show this season. Um, this one, I think I said the same thing in the mid-season review, but like, it feels kind of also all over the place, where it's like episode one was very like, beat his ham, gag, step on me thing, but episode like two was like, a very serious discussion on what it means to be like, gay and Yuri, and it just like, and yeah. I kind of wish they like, went into that a bit more, because like, I feel like, they also went to incest love as well. I don't know what the author is going into. Um, but like, I kind of wish she had a more more serious take on the Yui instead of going back to. I like, think the, you'll the get there. I think I, I think this one is a slow burn from what I've heard of the source material, and it does get there eventually. And the people that are fans and stick with it like it a lot. But you have to work for it, unfortunately. Have you read it? No, this is just based on. I follow a lot of people that like it, but I okay. I tried. I watched two episodes, but I'm with you. I th I think I think if the source or if the um adaptation looked a little bit nicer and wasn't as clunky in the ways you were talking about, even I could have stuck with it because it doesn't take a lot for me to watch Yuri. But like, I didn't. I thought I was like, this is gonna take forever to progress, and I just couldn't really get into the hook of it, unfortunately. But it wasn't like awful. If you like Yuri, it's probably worth watching. All right, and then the worst for last, um, shoot, here was season three. Um, they fixed the production issue season two had, but like the story is still like an incredible jumbled mess. Um, I brought the whole Doctor Stone, the guy steals the gun to cause like a fiasco for a reason because that literally that all shit that he was does is just like a dumpster random story. Someone makes a dumb decision for no reason and cause like a conflict to solve and then it jumps to a jump cut to something that was completely unrelevant and it just feels really disjointed and i i would say just just, just don't watch it um the um boko no army Bear protocol which was the esports of this season um we knew from episode one that it looked really bad yeah and it was gonna be really bad um i thought there could be some like this could be like some trashy fun show to watch but unfortunately like it didn't go that way and then what like really really set me off was like in the finale imagine like an esports finale two people like facing off it's like a 1v1 they just stand at each other stand still nothing to do and pulls the pistols and just shoot each other like right across from each other and it's just like and they make a whole like epic oh this is a big thing going on and then I'm they pull the like single knives. esports game where there's a one v one shooter. <laughs> as a well, no, it's it's a team game. It's like oh, it's okay. like imagine like Cisco Valorant. All the team is dead. Then two people both comes out. They send across each other, start shooting pistols, and then pull a knife out and start shooting each other. <laughs> and that's like, that, supposed to be the esports thing. If that happened, was... if that happened in a real Valorant match, like at the pivotal moment, it would be the sickest thing of all time. I will admit, but no, that I don't think that is what would happen. Um, no, but bad. yeah, the esports falls apart entirely, and the characters just like also falls apart. So unfortunately, it was not too the bad. fun, trashy maybe, show I wanted. Maybe we'll get a good one someday. Hey, solo but leveling yes. is this season? Not the same thing. All right. Oh so, shit, you're right. That is not esports. All right. Now speaking of not <laughs> esports, unless dating is an esport, uh, 
talk us about this next one, which is a big hit for this year. Oh fuck yeah! Kimi no Koto ga dai 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 ski na hundred ni no kanajo, or the hundred girlfriends that really 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 love you, or Hyakano, which I've. I'm gonna be calling it Hyakano. I'm so tired of of saying the full name over and over again. Just say Dai Dai Daisuke. <laughs> Whatever. I, I like Hyakano. Hyakano like flows really well. Yeah, I agree. Uh, sure. So this is the peak of a uh, harem anime comedy. It's it's just so funny. Like man, th- this r- really was made by someone who's like grew up wa- like reading and watching harem anime, and they're like. Fuck it, I'm gonna make my own, and I'm gonna make fun of the, the genre the entire time, and yet somehow they make it better than anything that has come before. <laughs> like, it's just so consistently funny. It, 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 it has the tropes, and then it just completely subverts them too. But like, it also stays within the tropes as well. It's, it's, it's weird, it's crazy. Like, obviously, they're, they're gonna have a Cinderay in there. And like, normally, like, I, I don't give a shit about Cinderays, but the, the Cinderay here consistently funny like every single one of her jokes like lands with me it, it, it's it's really funny all the girls are really good so far except for the science girl she is very clearly like fetish bait i don't, I don't like her like just, she's a lolly and yet she can turn into a big titty milf and like she apparently the big titty milf is her normal form but she uh, she stays as the lolly for the most part uh yeah, no thanks on that one. But we make up for it by actually join, uh, like, the mom of the first girl joins the harem. It's so funny. And really? I, uh, yeah. That's <laughs> she, crazy. A 28-year-old joins the, the, the harem of these 16-year-olds. Bullshit. I told Juan what happens if his dad confessed to Natalie. And he that, said <laughs> Anyway, mm. um, okay, so this show is insane and crazy. Um, I, I do have some things I liked, some things I didn't like about it. Um, I did like the fact that like there is, there is a like a hundred girlfriends. I mean, it's not hundred girlfriends, but there's a lot of like girlfriends, and they he spends at least one character dedicating them to give them each their own like spotlight, and they don't feel like generic characters. They're actually kind of char- fully characterized and fleshed out. The things I didn't like about it is that I do like a lot of the jokes, but some of them just don't really hit with me as much, especially like when it gets really like sexual and it kind of like it. The show does its best when it's parodying other like harem tropes, but when it's like, oh, let me just grow my boobs like four times after drinking this potion, it's kind of like, I. Uh, I didn't need this kind of thing. So, not all the comedy lands, which I guess is, like, reasonable, but, like, I, it lands a lot less than I would have liked from this kind of show. But all when right. it does land, it's, like, it's the, there. like, 10 out of 10. Yeah, it's yeah. there. Well, that you doesn't really... Have something? I don't know. I don't know if there... I just... I don't know if I should watch this still. To I, this day. I, like, as, as much as I'm praising it, I still don't think you would like it, Chris. I might, I still am so curious. This one might be one of my, I'll try to get through it, or at least some of it for the end of the year shows, but at the same time, I'm not necessarily in a hurry to put new stuff on my list. Uh, I will say, like, uh, the girls are great. Rintaro himself, the protagonist. That's what I've heard. I've heard he's really good. He is the Riz master. Every single thing this man says is for Riz, and he's the best. I love this man. It, it really makes me think how he has not gotten a girlfriend until now. With how much well, it's just he has bad tried. He no, 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 oh, Chris, Chris, Chris. He's, that, he's, that, he's been rejected a hundred times. Oh my god! But then he he prays to God. He's like, "Oh, I messed up. You're uh, you were supposed to have a girlfriend a long time ago. Okay, well, here we'll turn all the hundred rejections to a hundred actual uh, relationships." Yeah. I I think Chris could watch like the first like three episodes. I think yeah, I think he'd have fun with the first three episodes if he wants. To Hit me up when they're on like girl forty eight. I'm, I just that's what I want to know. Well, I know because I know the manga. Right I know is it 20, 26. 26, yeah. yeah. And I just think it's crazy. Like they're gonna have to start. Maybe he's gonna date a bunch of clones or something. I don't know. We'll no, see. No, I I he, highly doubt it. My I'll guess say, is he, a, it's a classroom. It's gonna be One Piece. There's gonna be a thousand chapters. 
Um, he, he really spends a lot of time like fully fleshing out all, each which of is the good girls. and I think which that that's good. the best part of the bit is, which which is why I don't think he's gonna go with you know, the clones of classroom he's gonna spend then like it's at the least... ne- then it's our generation's one piece <laughs> it really is yeah and you all know right. what I'm, I'm here for and it and y'all are a further ride that's actually I will get I will have so much respect for this series if it does that and there are like genuinely 400 500 chapters I think that would be sweet um okay I think I showed you guys the post but it was like what's gonna finish for us the One Piece anime or the Rentoro's I think the One Piece manga. anime probably will. <laughs> I, I, I think One Piece will, will finish Especially it. since they're fucking remaking it. Anyway, we don't have to talk about that right now. Uh, okay, 16-bit sensation, another layer. I've heard this one got pretty wet and wild, so I'm curious the, to hear. Yeah, the, this show is fucking weird <laughs> and wild. Um, yeah. <clears throat> so it starts off cute, interesting time travel journey, learning about visual novels of the 90s and, and 2000s, right? Uh, and Moe is important for the culture. And then the last couple episodes, uh, she she finally makes her dream game. It's a big hit. It's Final Fantasy, whatever. Well, and, I think I think they're jumping around a little too much there. Because I mean, because the first nine episodes kind of don't really matter. Okay. So the first twist of the thing was that oh, she time travels to the past and she makes video games. And then the second. Uh, twist was like, oh, she actually goes back and forth between time. She goes back to the present after she's done like time traveling and making a game or something. And then the third twist was like the not she doesn't time travel, but one of the guys in the past also time travels and meets a bunch of weirdos and they make a game for some goddamn reason. Uh, and they're weird and they disappear and then he comes back. And then she makes a game, and then so one day after she makes a game, she goes back to the present, and instead of like Akihabara Moe thing, it's like everything's Moe has moved to America, and everything looks super like ugly. Just, and like twenty no, seconds, Moe, one of the no most exists in one of world. the most deranged twists in anything <laughs> yeah, I've ever heard. Society has advanced farther because of it. Mm. Yes, Moe has saved society. Probably kind true. Of. And then we have a- AI, but AI is dumb. So we now enslave humans to feed the AI input to make it creative or it's something like so that. It's so bizarre. And then aliens come. <laughs> yeah, the aliens? final episode is aliens. And I'm like, okay, sure, what the fuck ever. And then she makes another game. And then she saves Moe. It, dude, there was a fucking Madoka Magica Connect jump scare. <laughs> <laughs> That's I'm like, what the fuck say. is happening? Like, this is technically an entered song uh, f- capable for the year. No, it's which not. Which is insane. It I'm is, technically. Technically. Okay, but I'm gonna... If, you are not allowed to... I'm not, I'm not going to. Okay. If lo- for, like, well, we're gonna ban... If we have to ban some of the Scott Pilgrim ones, we'll ban Connect too. I feel like Logan's yeah. gonna throw a hissy fit if I make him ban the Scott Pilgrim one. Uh, I think they should all Whatever. Be uh, I do well, want to emphasize uh, the one episode where they were like... For a split second, they were advocating for AI. Weird. The, the, for like two minutes. For they were two like minutes. AI. They were like AI is very useful of like expediting, you know, the boring, the the, the long time was time to consume and stuff. Yeah. The, but then they like, immediately oh, followed up with being like, "Oh, but AI can only replicate what it's right. given, so it doesn't have any creative energy." Yeah, sure. So, That's a nuanced take. I mean, that that is true. I think game dev, not this is a fucking we're not a gaming podcast. I think game development has lots of real applications for AI, but the companies are being really lazy and using them to replace like artists and voice actors <laughs> instead of using it for like generation and like, you know, for big open world stuff. I don't know. That's a complicated discussion no anyway. like, the, they were like advocating like oh no you, you could have the ai make the art for you yeah that's and, and i'm like let's yeah. not advocate for this but they, it, like it, i said they immediately follow up with being like oh this is the caveat that like ai but like for one line and like i feel like a lot of people would miss not, that one line apparently they shill ai no, and what, in a what's the one uh fucking the bad the idol show. Keys and I show, yeah, which there was season two aired this season, by the way. No, uh, the Keys and I wasn't doing AI. They were doing uh, NFTs. 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 So NFTs. It but it was in like a post credit thing. It was so weird. And I can't dumb. believe this but... show got made. Anyway, any final thoughts Anyways. on 16 on bit before we move on? It sounds like it kind of jumped the gun a little bit. Um, I don't disagree with one thing AI because the whole point of them like enslaving humans was because AI was like incompetent and couldn't make games by themselves. Um, so I don't. Think oh, so it's really actually like... making the opposite argument. 
Yeah. <laughs> like I said, for a split second, it advocates for it. Well, for a split yeah, for like second. one second. It's just crazy that like 99% of the stuff in this show was on in the original manga. Yeah, I was going to say, this is like, original manga. what a weird you know, this, adaptation. It's called 16-bit, another I, layer. Uh-huh. So like, it's yeah. like a different take on, on, on this story, I guess. <laughs> kind of but like 16-bit, that. I think, is originally supposed to be like just a bunch of like girls in the 90s making like visual, visual novels. Mm-hmm. And that's it. There was no like time travel or like AI. Or, it barely or focuses on the visual novels in this anime. Um, it kind of did in the first like four episodes. Yeah, but like it quickly like you but know. Then it became about be, like anything aliens else. and. AI. Anyway, th- this was very much like a seasonal show. I don't think I would have watched it Otherwise... if it wasn't airing. <laughs> okay. Yeah. Well, there you go. Um, speaking of time travel, uh, we watched more Tokyo <laughs> Revengers. Uh, we could use this opportunity, I think. Did we talk about the last season? I think we did on that. We episode. talked about the we Christmas did. arc. Yeah. yeah, we did. Um, okay, so this is considered to be the best arc of the manga, according to Juan and many other people who have read the manga. Um, anyway, uh, well, uh, someone else talk about it first. <laughs> Please. I beg you. Uh, I, I strongly advise all Tokyo Revenger anime-only fans, uh, you could stop watching it from here. Like, the like this is it this is the peak everything after this sucks chris will say that this already sucked that tokyo revengers was always mid if you're like invested in the characters like this is as good as it gets you you can stop watching from here okay uh chris and logan i want someone uh, else to go before me i want to go last um I stuck my neck out for this one a little bit in the pre-read, and I have felt um, more and more betrayed as time has gone on. Uh, I technically dropped it back in Season 2, but uh, it turned out nothing in Season 2 actually seemed to matter very much, because I picked it up in Season 3 again, and it didn't... Uh, there was, I didn't yeah. really feel like I had missed anything. It's because you didn't. Um, it's because Season can, 2 was completely I, inconsequential. I can, <laughs> you I can like tell you that what I did watch of Season... Yeah. From what I did watch of season two, this seems this season seemed better, and I do really like at the very end at least that Takamichi finally got his hands on. Um, uh, I'm blanking on his name. Kitaki. Bad guy yeah. guy. Kitaki. Yes, I I do like that they finally like laid into each other. Um, and I thought it was extremely funny that I predicted the twist of that fight by accident while making a joke to Juan. Um, I. If you have not picked up Tokyo Revengers, I don't think you should, having seen this much of it. Um, that's that's my position. I don't I didn't think this was like horrible per se. Like I've seen worse. I've seen worse this year, frankly, but it it wasn't very good. And um this is probably the worst show that I finished this year, I think. At least. I, I, uh so. I'll have to go back and look. I think it is for me too, but we'll see. Real quick, okay, but before yeah, I Oh, wait, you gotta continue on, Logan? Uh, no, I was just gonna say, it always seems to have pacing issues. Um, the writing is very... The, the the pacing is always super slow, and that exacerbates how much of the show is just people shouting at each other while a fight should be happening. And I, Chris has a lot more narrative issues that I'm sure he's about to talk about the moment I cut him loose. But yeah, I just... I, I can't really say that this is very good. I think especially since we have to kind of group both of the seasons together for year-end evaluation purposes, since it's all kind of just the one show, it does not help, <laughs> is, what I'll, is all I'll say. Uh, I would, Tim, how about you? Uh, I don't have much to say about it. Um, I was never really hard in Revengers either. Um, I think the season was probably on par with the original season, maybe a little bit better, but like, there's a lot of like really bad thing but also some like kind of decent things mixed in um the whole motorcycle hitting thing yeah the whole the <laughs> truck thing was wild um yeah the whole gun thing was also weird. there's just a there's lot, a just lot like, yeah uh, there's a lot to unpack if we really so, want to get into it but ultimately it was like this yeah. i think the reason i was let down so much by this season in particular is because at points it was the best the show had ever been um, which I think is why Juan and some other people consider this to be the best arc. It features Takamichi actually doing some stuff and getting in some fights and like 
going the hardest he'd ever been. It made me think that he was less of a wet blanket and more of someone with resolve and not just a punching bag. Like there was real, he was ready to fucking die in this. And there were some moments where if the enemy had more resolve, they would have just killed him. And they, you know, obviously they didn't. Um, so it, for cool Takamichi moments, uh, it was great. The problem was that every single time it was happening in the anime, Juan would post the screenshot from the manga and it would look like, you know, 30 times cooler and more intense than the anime was portraying it because this anime has always been a pretty mediocre adaptation of a much better drawn manga. And that just really, Mm -hmm. truly does not help. Despite that, right? Despite like I was hooked at the beginning because I thought the narrative after the glacial Christmas arc was it finally going somewhere at least a little bit interesting but then it proceeds to introduce izana who is just a terrible villain unfortunately and uh uh i i could go into the nitpick mode and and talk about all of the individual choices that i think are just completely awful but i i really think that tokyo revengers is not a very well written manga i would i would the word amateurish is what i keep coming back to it just feels like it feels like something someone in high school wrote. I don't know. It's really a, a lot of the characters are very flat. The motivations are pretty bad. Finding out Kitaki's true motivations and reasoning behind everything that he was doing is maybe the most a villain has ever been ruined for me in anime, or at least in a long time. I was like, oh my god. He went from being like this very enigmatic, like cerebral thinker he's like oh man what's what's he doing does he have time travel powers too oh no he's just a fucking simp and he's doing all of this so that the girl that (laughs) he hasn't spoken to in 10 years will marry him i guess i don't know i I forgot about he murdered multiple people he killed them with a weapon anyway he um, did it all for the nookie i think that i think that the show accelerating into real murder every single time it does this i think uh it was better in season one but like th- when it raises the stakes it always feels really goofy just because the rest of them are kind of like street brawling high school gangs i don't know the um, middle schoolers aren't they oh yeah sorry some, uh, it's a mix some are high schoolers some are middle takimichi is a middle schooler um anyway i think it really went off the rails and basically everything about the finale of this one was just pretty awful i hate Izana's backstory and his relationship with Mikey and his brother, it is boring and overdone and not very interesting. He's pretty flat. Um, Mikey as a character is literally j- all the decisions he makes serve the narrative. And it's really convenient every single time we go to the future. It's it's always like, ah, Mikey did a lot of bad shit and joined the bad guys and completely reversed on all of his characterization that had been developed in the last couple of episodes we'd seen him in present or in the past for some reason. Because every and apparently this is a problem that continues in the manga, according to on too, is that my, Mikey just keeps being bad when he goes back into the future. And it's just like, OK you ask why and the answer is so that the narrative can continue i think the thing that made me the most upset aside from the girl getting hit over the head with the baseball bat was uh the two characters dying together in the snow and the blood pulling all around and it was very like you know quasi romantic but it was like a very sweet death and then they cut away and find out that one of the two guys in fact did not die even though they played his death completely straight as a death in the scene i was (laughs) completely outraged anyway i'm a goofy goober yeah and so while this may have had some of the best individual moments at all of tokyo revengers i i did end up it when i was finished with it i decided that i hated tokyo revengers and i think it has to be one of the most (laughs) overrated over overrated shows slash manga of all time i cannot believe people like it as much i mean i can they like cute boys and they want to make them or they want to like draw them making out i get it but anyway end rant i'm glad to never have to talk about the show again because i am not yeah. watching the next season <laughs> don't don't watch the next seasons just don't Is there even a next season the, yeah. it hasn't been confirmed yet i'm sure they'll do another one i'm sure th- i mean like okay they ended before they thought uh or before i thought it was gonna end which is w- weird because like they're supposed to go back to the future one more time and then the, like stuff's supposed to develop and, and then it's supposed to like go on, on a cutoff like on a big old cliffhanger but it just doesn't here it just stops yeah, the, at, at, also it is extremely strange the stopping place it's just it just ends it's, uh, it's it one just of the shows ends, i was like, talking about before that just oh ends. hey uh, kisaki died the the other people died uh, that, that's where we're ending the show Woo-hoo. yeah it it felt really abrupt and like 
There it should have had so, one more episode. There were so many characters that got so much. I'm just thinking about this now for the first time. They got so much development in season two and like just completely absent. The show completely becomes about Takamichi, Mikey, and Kataki at the end and Izana. And all the side characters that they spent so much time developing in the Christmas arc are just completely ah. Uh, it's so yeah, funny what? that you keep calling him Kitaki. It's Kisaki. Kisaki, whatever. <laughs> the, entire the, time, the entire time, the entire time we watched <laughs> Loki Revengers, you called him Kitaki. Same shit. Anyway. Uh, right. Anyway, Rip Bozo, on. terrible uh, villain. Worst villain of the year. Um, I'm just glad he grew balls this season. Yeah, that was at least... Takamichi, no, yeah. The only I've been thing. waiting three seasons for that. And he, like, to be fair, he is pretty badass the entire rest of the sh- uh, of this series. Too bad it doesn't amount to anything. Too bad. Anyway. Uh, all right. Moving on to a different adaptation. Um, Roroni Kenshin. Uh, this one we also didn't end up finishing. Um, or by me, I mean me and Logan, um, who were supposed to finish it. Uh, not for any real particular reason. It was fine. I was enjoying it. It was a, a serviceable adaptation of a manga that I am very fond of in my childhood. Um, I wish it was like a little tighter. I don't know. I think they could be a little bit more creative with how the visuals are presented. And I think it ends up being a little bit flat a lot of the time and the fights range in quality, but I have no major complaints about the episodes we watched. Um, I don't know. It's been, was Ruin Attention also made by Latin films? Yeah. Yes. They were doing that at the same time as Tokyo Revengers. Well, no Ru- wonder. Kenshin looked way better <laughs> to be fair. So. I'm sure the like they were putting like a little bit more effort on mm-hmm. the Kenshin team. It's a but big... still like it. I don't. Well, I mean, two, I don't two think... shows like in, by the same studio in the same season, like it's gonna hinder yeah. production. Like Lightning Film is not like a phenomenal. They're studio They're hugely to begin mixed with. bag. I think it just um, kind of depends on the staffers they have. Because Call of the Night was I, really cool and looked amazing, and then this. Yeah, is just... but it wasn't really that action oriented either. Still had better action than either of these other shows we're talking about. I mean, like, I, I did not read Kenshin growing up, and, like, this was my first exposure to it, uh, other than the one live-action movie that you forced to watch, like, a long time ago. Um, and, like, I, I was pretty bored by episode six. It, I can kind of understand that, because, like, Shonen, like, nowadays is not the same as Shonen, like, back in the 90s. Like, it is a very, like, kind of slow-paced kind of show, and I think it doesn't really age yeah, they didn't that well with the current it. audience. They didn't update it. I um, was kind of expecting it, them to do more, but they this is a very faithful Incredibly faithful. Adaptation. I think it's even more faithful than the original yeah. um, adaptation. But, like, I could see why, like, on, on this, like, JJK pilled brain would be like, this is too boring for me. You have to kind of get into the mechanics of the fight, and I think that that is one of the more Im- the fun parts about the manga. Um, and I don't know, maybe I would go back now and read the manga and it wouldn't hit nearly as hard as it did when I was like, you know, 13 and was like, ah, oh, dude, cool. He punched the thing and then his knuckles extended and then he, he blew the rock into pieces and that can happen in real life too. <laughs> anyway, <laughs> the, the, I, I, I will admit getting to come back to Kinchin fight mechanics and them trying to be explained in real world <laughs> logic is incredibly funny <laughs> still to this day. Um. I think they could have done a little bit better job at doing that, kind of explaining how each mechanics works. Uh, yeah. Anyway, uh, I might finish this in time for season two because I would like to watch the main arc. Uh, with what's his name, the bandage mm-hmm. villain when that Shishio. yeah Shishio when he comes up because that's pretty classic shonen right there. Um, but yeah, I don't have much to say about this. If you are a fan of the original manga, this is a pretty okay adaptation. So. Logan, any thoughts on this yourself? Uh, nothing that they haven't really said, um, except that, like Chris said, I think the fun part of Kenshin is the mechanics of the fights, and I don't think that was conveyed as well as I had hoped that it was going to be. Um, but yeah, this was this was a fine adaptation, um, and uh, yeah, I don't have much to say about it besides. Okay. Cool. Um, all right speaking of yeah, uh, adaptations next step, good adaptations i would like to hear the the non-manga readers take on this next which is a spy family season two uh i mean i guess i can start uh, it, it's good uh, i liked it it was fun hell yeah um i feel like the cruise arc delivered on the promise of the premise of spy family better than anything has so far 
Uh, and I also really like that very little of this season took place at school. <laughs> oh, Logan doesn't like school. That's yeah. right. Look, I, I graduated from school. It it just it felt like at kind of the end of the that the the last season or the last part or so forth, they were spending a lot of time just purely focused on Anya and the academy, mm-hmm. and I was getting kind of tired of it. Yeah, but. But the cruise arc, like, everybody gets a chance to do their, like, big superpower thing, and they're all teaming up, even though they don't know they're teaming up to stop this terrorist threat on the boat. And it's it was really cool the way it all kind of weaved together. And I think that that, like I said, that delivered on the promise of Spy Family better than basically anything since Lloyd proposing with a grenade pin has yeah, like that. Absolutely. I think the cruise arc is a really excellent piece of, of, of yeah. spy family. And I am happy that we got to see it. Me too. I can't Such, believe Logan you know, has detail. not enjoyed spy family since episode two. Damn. <laughs> spy family is good, but I, I, I don't think I've been, you know, in love with it in the way that Chris and that a lot of people have for as much of the runtime as right. You know, a I lot will. Of I mean, like have. the the tennis match was pretty fun. Oh, it's so good. I will. I will give you that. I think that the adults tend to be better, or like bring better narratives than the purely like Anya and the school children focused chapters do. Though there are some standout ones here and there. Like I really like this wasn't this season. I like the one about the kid who thinks that he's going away forever. And then that was to, hilarious. Yeah. So they, there always can be I'm some. I'm not fun saying ones. the school is always yeah. bad, just that focusing on it too much. I have know? good news, which in that I think that the show or the manga hits a balance a little. That I hope, at least from what I can remember, of arcs that are more like the cruise arc after this. So hopefully you will continue to be impressed. I am very excited. That's great about the movie as well because it's going to be original, and I'm interested to see what the Wit Cloverworks uh, team will do with some original stuff. Um, I love this season. I think this is the best season we've had so far. Um, mostly just because it was adapting one of the best arcs in the manga, but it's just been... I, I have continuously been overjoyed with this adaptation of one of my favorite manga. It They knock it out of the park every time. It's delightful. Chris, the, did you watch uh, the best guy ever? Uh, his video on the... On I have not. Family? Is uh, it good? Yeah, he, he complains uh, about your specifically and like about that arc and like how he says it's like how it, it doesn't work as a narrative like uh it's it's a weird take he's wrong but that's okay some people sometimes people are wrong i but think like, that this is the best is like, characterization he, he's, he's, of your that we've had so far it's so yeah. good it's like her season in some way anyway yeah uh anyway tim did you have any thoughts on the family um i think i'll i think i'm going to reiterate my point that i really did not like the pre-cruise stuff this season I think there's some good episodes, like, but that's just. Me. I think I don't even remember what it like, was exactly. They, they, I think there was like one or two, like episode. It's the Bond two, episode like where he and back. Lloyd took down that one group. That was or, at the end. Was that it? was after? Was it after? That's post cruise. Oh. Yeah, yeah. I'd have to go back. Like, and the look. first half was incredibly like boring, and I was actually kind of losing interest in Spy Family a bit. Um, I think the cruise arc. Oh, we had the episode where really she gets good. shot. That's such a good fucking chapter. Whatever. That's oh, the first that, episode. That, that was the first episode, which yeah. was yeah. Cool. Like I, I mentioned, the first episode was really good, but like up, you know, a lot of it was forgettable and weak. And it wasn't until the cruise that it really started kicking off. And I do like the the, the your stuff. I think her episode is like the single best characterization episode we've had like of the entire series so far. Um, that being said, I do think I pref- I think season one is a more well balanced show than maybe. second season, maybe. So maybe the best arc, but like not not the best season for me. Still, so fun, so enjoyable. Good. Yeah, it's one of the best but, adaptations out there. They're killing it. Um, all right. Okay, next up is Helk, another adaptation. Uh, yeah, this was an interesting little show. I think. That I would like to read the manga. That is my take I, after... I, too, want, want to read the I manga. Think just that, I think that it, it covered a lot of what ex- exists in the manga, but it did not quite cover the whole story. Um, and so I think there's a decent amount left still. I don't think this adaptation was, like, stellar. I think that it was fine, probably, from what I could tell. I think the visuals were a little bit weak, um, and the pacing could be a little bit weak at the same time. But I think it was able to capture about what helk is good which is this balance of comedy at the beginning um with a pretty serious macro narrative when you really get down to it um 
And I think the way that they're able to balance Hulk is this extremely silly over the top and yet very like Greek tragic hero to some extent uh, is mm-hmm. quite a balancing act that they are able to accomplish. And uh, An Chan slash whatever her name is, the Vamiro Va- Va- or whatever. Um, is a Vermilio. great Vermilio. Yeah, is a great straight man. Also, I would die for Pichon. I love that guy, dude. <laughs> uh, that that's what the second half was missing. And yeah, where is Pichon. he? Anyway, Pichon? The, the, like, the, is that the, the name the, of the, the fucking bird? bird? Yeah, it's Pee Wee. Pee Wee. Pee Wee. Pichon is the stupid bird in the new show that we haven't watched. Yes, yet. which is also <laughs> another bird. Yeah. Um, but yeah, no, like the the pacing in the show is really weird. Like it, it's it really starts off as like just like pure comedy. And then it just kind of becomes like a generic shonen, but then it does fix itself. Like once we get through Hulk's backstory, and like uh, how, like Chris said, like he's like a Greek tragic hero, and like that, it's really interesting. And then like the last couple episodes focus on like the the demons like fighting against the, like the the bad guys, and like I wasn't having as much fun without Hulk. Like that's what I'm here for, baby. I'm here for Hulk, and he wasn't there. I, I want to read the manga just just to see like where the story goes, because like there's got to be like at least like twelve more episodes, maybe even a whole another twenty four. Mm-hmm. But um, like it, it was like ramping up towards like some, yeah, some, like, I big really climax. thought we were gonna get through the whole narrative, and I was kind of surprised when it just kind of ended on a like ah, we'll get you next time situation. Yeah, mm-hmm. I think there's the whole like two cores worth of stuff left. Then yeah, if they were gonna cover it. I I think I more or less agree with everything you guys all said. I think the pacing is really wacky. Um, I do really like all the characters. I I think and and Pee Wee and Hulk makes a great main cast. That really kind of like that kind of what like made me stick with the show. Otherwise, it kind of dragged on and got a little bit boring a bit for me personally. Um, I think they spent an ungodly amount of time on the flashback. I thought it was they did. That was episodes. so long. long, and that was like the entire. It, it felt like <laughs> twelve episodes or something. I, I, I think it was, it was like five or six episodes yeah, of flashback. It was a lot. It, it felt a lot, and it just I felt so bad for like helping the flashback. So just all the humans are just so unnecessarily evil. It wasn't no. all of that's, them. That's it was a, mainly the, it was the the group that is. It's all of it. them except for a single digit number of people. Like yeah, they, it's every, all the nobles. Every time there's like a crowd shot, there there's all all those people are being assholes mm-hmm. too. So yeah, it's that, that was that was maybe the one thing that I didn't like about this uh, is that I thought that that was a little excessive. But even you know, if I kind of see it in more of a like mythical you know folklorish sense, like it is a Greek tragedy, then yeah, you know, the entire chorus acting like an asshole that makes sense. Um, I will say that this like this the adaptation didn't wasn't like good i'm not gonna say that it's good but i don't think it brought down the material all that much for me like this is just when i hear that there is an anime adaptation of a manga coming out this is kind of what i expect it to look like and i'm happy if it looks better Mm -hmm. than this but it's like you know they like anime anime adaptations it's often said are just advertisements for the manga and this is usually the quality of stuff that you get yeah. when you you know i would we, still... we get lost in the spy families and the jujutsu kaisens but this is this is what an anime adaptation looks like i would still prefer i would say if you want to compare this to dr stone i take dr stone every day i think dr stone is more like oh dr stone looks so much better yeah i would say is the level of quality as a minimum, I would like at least. I know Me that that's too. not how it is realistically, but oh well. I I didn't mind the quality as much with help. Like I it think it would be okay. Yeah, it looked it. okay. I think I honestly just think it's like the, the pacing of the mm-hmm. show. Honestly, uh, where it they could have sped parts of it up from yeah from a comedy to a serious show to flashback and then back to serious. It was just like yeah. I would I, still recommend yeah. it if you like kind of goofy takes on a fantasy genre i think it does that setting in a better more unique way than it's been done a lot recently um and i think mm-hmm. that the characters are pretty fun too so i, I would still give it the, the recommend you, like you could watch the anime i wouldn't stop someone if they told me they were gonna watch the anime but if someone was like looking for rex i would absolutely wreck the manga instead you know? I, I think so too yeah okay 
Uh, speaking of, it's so fun that we can talk. We've been talking about shows with uh, okay. pacing issues because I think Pluto might have some of the best pacing of anything I've ever watched in my life. Um, <laughs> so here we are. We finally got get to talk about Pluto. Um, man, this is a passion project, like a proper passion project. This studio set out with one goal in mind, which was let's make fucking Pluto and let's do it right. Mm -hmm. And I can now mm -hmm. report to you that they did. They successfully did it right. Mm -hmm. What a fucking piece of media. God damn. Dude, like, yeah. I am such a I'm sucker for robot stories. Like, like them realizing, like, what, what being human, like, really means. And, like, you know, uh, how some robots are, like, more human than actual humans. Uh, like, like, shit like that. I'm a sucker for that. And, like, this delivers on that and beyond. And, like, it's just so gripping. I've, like, never mm. been, like, more, like, on the edge of my seat watching this show. Yeah, I'm realizing we all, we didn't get to hear each other's reactions, so a lot of shit got oh, revealed yeah, in the end of the, I mean, Logan mm. knew because he read the manga, but, like, a lot of shit gets revealed oh, in the yeah. very last episode. Yeah. So, like, mm -hmm. there's so much mystery that they are drip-feeding you even towards, like, the very end. And it's mm -hmm. and like there all these there's there's all these layers like learning the the professor at the very end is actually a replica robot that he thought he was a human the whole time. Um, mm -hmm. like, That's insane. And like, I know you don't, you don't find out the truth about Gazisht until like after he's yeah dead he's dead he like dies and episodes. then you find out about his the memory that got wiped. It's crazy. Mm -hmm. Also yeah. the the but I do think I think it's really compelling though the way that the story gets told like I. Mm -hmm. I it, it it holds you up until that very end because they're just holding back little bits and pieces of, of the narrative that don't quite add up to you. I, I, yeah. I think that this is a really immaculately told thriller and I am just, I am a complete sucker for any like pot boiler thriller that also has some heart to it. Mm -hmm. And uh, I, I really loved this. I'm glad that this got a very handsome adaptation because it was, I really love the manga and I really like this, so. Yeah, dude, I, I really want to read more stuff of the of the author. Uh, I, yeah, Naoko I need Urasawa. to watch. Mon I need to read, I Monster. read Monster. I know that's, that's that was my first takeaway from this. Is like, <laughs> damn, I should read Monster. Probably, I want to read Twentieth Century Boys. That too. Yeah, I I would read Twentieth Century Boys. Oh man, how do you like it, Tim? Since you probably finished it way before we did. <laughs> God, it's been a hot second since I thought about Pluto. Yeah, for the um, context for the show, all three of us that are not Tim finished this show within the past twenty four hours. <laughs> I finished it within the past couple of hours. I think Juan did too. <laughs> yeah, no, I did. <laughs> yeah. I did like an hour before the podcast. I really like Pluto. Um, I'm not going to say it's perfect. Uh, there was things I had problems with it. Um, by far, like the best things were always the stuff around Gershoots, whether or not he was like alive or not. Um, I think the show feels a little bit awkward as it, like, tries to pivot back to Adam and try to, like, own itself back with, the, like, the main original story that was based off of. I think it got a little bit weaker. Um, I think it was drip-feeding us a lot of information, but there's still a lot left unanswered. and a lot Which I think was I very intentional, and I think, think that was cool. Was necessary? No, I don't agree. I think it's like, cool to have some mysteries that you don't the, really know about. The first thing I have to ask, I asked Logan about something about the manga was like, why the teddy bear? Yeah, that's was also there. me and Mark. We're <laughs> like, we were talking about what? that the whole time in the finale. We were like, are we going to find out what the fuck is going on with the teddy bear? But I love the way that that ended with the other killer robot mm -hmm. coming in and like kill it. Oh, that was so hard. I was like, full, let's go. Because honestly, Loki, I love the murder robot. He's one of my favorite characters. I, I, I love the murder robot. Dude. I just don't necessarily see the point of the US president and the teddy bear robot being present. I think it just... I think it, were... it's commentary on the US leadership being all about maintaining power at the cost of humanity and shit like yeah. that. You know, it, It's not very subtle with its themes, and it continued to not be subtle mm -hmm. with its themes throughout in the back half. And I was like, ah, yes. Man, uh, the country, uh, America being called Thracia in this, like, my Fire Emblem loving heart. I'm like, oh, shit. <laughs> 776. <laughs> but, like, dude, uh, so I I'm, I'm the dub advocate of the group, and I can firmly say that this is a good dub. phenomenal dub. Yeah, that's good to know. I'm so glad. Like, uh, the, the killer robot, he's voiced by Prozy D, 
uh, uh, someone Cho? Or yeah. no, the killer. The killer one. The, 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 murder the killer one. robot. The killer. That's, the killer robot. Dude, he's, dude, he's picking he, up the roles, he is dude. He's phenomenal at that role. Like, when you said, like, he, uh, when he was, like, talking to the, the teddy bear, mm-hmm. fucking cold. He is so good. Oh. I'm gonna have to go watch that uh, scene, was... actually. That's kind of sick. Yeah. Um, I just, I, uh, when, when we finally got to see Pluto the robot for the first time because obviously he's shrouded in like the tornado or in shadow for most of the show and and we finally got to see his full design which is sick by the way um and and he was just a little bit too i don't want to say cute but like he wasn't he didn't give that villain energy i knew he was gonna turn face at the end and i was like and what he does mm-hmm. uh it's such a good conclusion it what an immaculately written yeah, story it, like he's not evil he's no just he, like, he he was forced to hate because his dad hated mm-hmm. it's, yeah it's like i said it's, it's not subtle it's, it's not subtle about its themes it's like hatred is bad <laughs> you know <laughs> like, oh shit it's, it's kind of like the same theme as uh as attack on titan in a way you yeah know, like except whole... that attack on titan bumbles it um i think that it's not entirely true i think i think that that theme manages to come through pretty well is like I think Attack on Titan is more about the cycles of violence and that yeah. this is a little bit more directly about countries like states Conflict, acting against yeah, each other yeah. and and what we see pe- like people obviously robots are seen as lesser the people of Persia slash the people of Iraq were seen as like collateral damage that are worthwhile for this cause co- you know it's it's you could get into the politics of it um, yeah. it's clearly commenting on some major uh, history that was happening around the time it was coming out in the early 2000s so um just just a fucking phenomenal political thriller a great story about robots and humanity um adam himself is the coolest a, a rendition i think we've seen him at least i don't know for me because like we're uh, just used to or, astro boy you know, know like with a silly of... blue suit but yeah yeah um Love the whole cast. Love everybody. Dude, I, love Gazette. He's so he's cool. He's such a great character. I love, I love, um, what's his name? I'm Epsilon. I was so sad when he died. I knew he was probably oh, going to die. But... Yeah. <laughs> oh, well. Anyway, mm-hmm. uh, everyone should watch Pluto. Definitely hard Pluto good. anime of the year contender. One of the best shows. Uh, I think it deserves its masterpiece status as a manga and i think the anime can safely go down in the same regard now as well which is exciting yeah mm-hmm. um okay uh next up no malin no malin tree for this one fucking uh, yeah dude like i didn't have my notes ready for it uh, when i did the the thing so I, I had to look it up last second but yeah it's, it's another the Netflix wikipedia exclusive. page i guess for the visual uh <laughs> anyway uh so we are, and if you're if you're about to get your pitchforks out, fucking sit down, bitch. This was made by Science Saru, okay? This was made in Japan. This is fucking anime, baby. It doesn't matter that the voice cast was, or the American voice cast came in. Did we watch the American dub? Of course we did, because it's got the fucking, every single voice actor from the original role reprising again. <laughs> Why would we not watch it? Dude, I cannot believe this got made. I when this first got announced, I thought it was just going to be an adaptation of the comic books, and I was perfectly excited like for that because I love the comics; mm-hmm. they're a classic part of my childhood. I I think most of mm-hmm. us reread it in preparation for watching yes. this, which is a great idea, um, because it definitely hits a lot harder once you're the kind of the age that a lot of the characters are, um, versus being a child, um, but instead we get this rebuild like evangelion style rebuild of scott pilgrim that chooses to focus on ramona and all the evil exes and all the other characters a little bit more than scott and man Mm -hmm. what a what a joy what a delight i i loved this i thought this was excellent i was just gonna say i really did like that they actually focused on the the evil exes more because like revisiting even the movies obviously just kind of blitz past especially the back half of exes um, but, uh, even in the comic books, uh, for as important characters as they are to Ramona's, you know, characterization, they, it never felt like they got a lot of focus, especially as the narrative was getting like way more caught up in, you know, Scott's stuff. Um, and, uh, also <laughs> this is not a narrative thing. This is just, this is the absolute funniest that young Neil has ever been. It's true. Everything Dude. that young Neil says in this anime <laughs> is the funniest ten thing ten. in the world. Yeah. I just woke up one day and uh, I, I made the script. I made it. 
<laughs> um, I, oh man, I am so glad Lucas Lee got as much screen time as he did. What a fucking performance by Chris Evans. United what a character. States of whatever. Mm-hmm. Uh, yeah. 10 out of 10. <laughs> Since I'm not apparently going to be able to give that an award this year, I have to say that United States of Whatever is such an inspired choice for Lucas Lee's introduction that song. That episode was phenomenal. Dude, I haven't you, thought about it in years, but it was perfect. If you didn't say anything, I would have thought that song was made for the show. No, just straight up. Because like, it, it was yeah. like a perfect sequence. It was. They really... Everything. I Scott Pilgrim has the, the comic... Uh, has an incredible cast of characters and i think the best part about this anime is just how much time is spent on a lot of these background characters that maybe not didn't get as much time like we get a lot more kim who is probably my favorite character in the whole show we didn't get that much we didn't get as much but we got enough okay we got more (laughs) we got a lot more like of even random character like what they do to gideon graves in this show is oh fucking the the shit out of gideon graves (laughs) They turn, they Gideon turn, and Julie, and Julie getting, like, they turn Julie Powers together. into this fucking, like, gremlin, like, I will fix him girl. Uh, what a power couple. It's just, it's, it is, and I'm not worried even starting to talk, the visuals are phenomenal. It is, the yes, fight sequences is, are immaculately animated. It's like peak Sai and Saru. It is so cool. The art style is so original and like, like uh, clearly based on the comic, and it seeing that in motion is brilliant. I think the one that scene that people are going to talk about, the one that I I am immediately thinking of, is um, Ramona and uh, Roxy fighting in the movie store that goes through oh, all the different movies. That, just, it, yeah, that... just so fucking cool. And and there's plenty more mm-hmm. fights like that throughout the whole show as well. It was pretty delightful. Mm-hmm. I do want to complain like a little bit about the the, the voice acting in the dub because like like I said earlier with Pluto, I, I'm the dub defender of this group, and Mary Elizabeth Winstead, she is not a voice actor. I thought she was it, fine. It, I don't know. N- no, I her, her I, I think performance was very stilted in a, a lot of points. It was okay. I think that she did a good job, like a a good chunk of the time. But whenever like it, the script called for her to emote more, which is not a lot of the time with Ramona Flowers, mm-hmm. but that I don't think she did as a good a job as I wanted her to in those moments. And I was thinking about her specifically. It's kind of one of the weakest. However, the voice cast. However, mm-hmm. Michael Sarah <laughs> killed it. <laughs> oh, Michael Sarah killed it. Uh, Kieran yes. Culkin as Absolutely. Wallace killed it yes uh chris evans is like we've already talked about um and then the other one uh is brandon ruth as todd ingram probably the best in the entire show he i oh man i thought what we have was special (laughs) (laughs) it's it's a tie between him and chris evans uh, of of who did the just just a fucking phenomenal group i'm i'm really like i'd I'd say the gideon is probably oh did he (laughs) uh Anyway, I mean, like, especially like after uh, him voicing the spot in uh, uh, Spider Verse Two. Yeah, yeah. He's like, a great. He's he's done other voice work. He's good. He's a great he's actor. he's a good voice actor. Mm-hmm. Like damn. Mm-hmm. Uh, I realize that Tim hasn't spoken. How did you feel about this? Um, I wasn't like Star Pokemon wasn't as like ingrained to my like. Yeah, that's what I was gonna ask. As much as you guys yeah. are, so I'm not like as like the one year difference are. is apparently massive in this one. Uh, yeah. But, like, I do really like how they, like, you know, spice things up from, like, the, you know, the rebuilt version and diverted from the TV shows to make it, like, a completely different thing. I think it makes a very, like, not sequel sequel to the show. Um, yeah, it was cool. It's just, you didn't expect to get that kind of closure in a way that neither the movie or the books really give and it it was cool it was just neat mm-hmm. maybe i do yeah. want a season two because like oh, it's they, not they definitely like they, it's I not happening it's like the, season two the, uh, like i i think they the whole show was about ramona and i think ramona like wrapped up beautifully in this season. i would obviously be delighted if they made more just because it means i get to see more science saru doing scott pilgrim a sentence that would have blown my dick off and if you had told me in 2016 <laughs> um so we <laughs> never got uh fuck lisa we never got lisa in the anime like she she yeah. only exists in the comics oh wait was she not in it at all she's not in it at all yeah i guess mm-hmm. so oh well 
I think, but so I think like, her I, arc. I want a season two. I think uh, her Joel arc like, was pretty fleshed out in the books. Yeah, I mean, yes, so. but like, was, I just, I just want to see her animated. I want to comics. hear her voice. You yeah, know, true. There and were like some. The, uh, there were some comics only characters in the uh, in the show, but the um. They leave it like on a cliffhanger with you know like Gideon and Julie like becoming evil together. So like I think a season two is it's possible. possible. I agree that it's possible, but I just it's it seems unlikely because it yeah. was very it, conclusive, which is it fine. Feels redundant. To I me. agree. I I think I'm happy mm, with where the franchise is. I think is. like just to like have like not not necessarily franchise, but like just you know just just keep hanging with these characters in this world. That like, would be why I would really like fun. it too. Yeah. If they add more, it wouldn't be to like flesh out any more characters or do like sorry. Some new I'm, takes. I'm sorry, I'm just I'm on the Wikipedia page. Apparently fucking Finn Wolfhard, who's the main character from Stranger Things, plays young Scott Pilgrim in the anime. Oh yeah. Dude, what a <laughs> yeah, cast. Yeah, yeah. And then also and Will Forte is adult Scott Pilgrim too. Which oh is, yeah. Anyway. Yeah, uh, Roger Horseman. I, I think I think it's just because it's fucking Edgar Wright and everyone will say yes to Edgar Wright um when it comes to working on a project. I'll say yes to Edgar Wright. Hell yeah. Uh, what what a show! I can't. I really, truly cannot believe it got made, and I I'm still, delighted. Personally, I really would have liked the comic adaptation too, though. That's the but, one thing. I I am a little bummed that we're never gonna get the Science Saru proper comic adaptation, and that maybe maybe that could happen again at some point. I don't know. Uh, no, but it just uh, seems uh, that so O'Malley is is staunch. Like, no, I, I don't want it adapted. I'm like, dang it, come on! I, I'd okay. like to see it animated. I think I'm happy that we got this, and I can call it at that. Yeah. All right, I think we're moving into our final uh, one. You might have thought we forgot about it, but no, we didn't, because <laughs> that would be bad anime podcasting if we didn't talk about the biggest show of the year. <laughs> um, all right, who wants to get us started on this fucking behemoth, this 24 or 23, I guess, episode gigantic moment in anime? As the resident Jujutsu Kaisen dick writer here, uh, season two was everything that I wanted from an adaptation. Like, we talked about some, like, pretty, like, mediocre adaptations uh, in the season, like Hulk and um, Tokyo Revengers. This delivers. Like, the, the manga for Jujutsu Kaisen, like, is already, like, extremely good art-wise. And then this just elevates it to another fucking level. God bless those MAPPA animators. I, I want every single one of those animators' dick sucked. I hope they get, like, the best sloppy of their goddamn life. They won't. They're busy working on the Chainsaw Man movie. I know, and that's <laughs> sad. <laughs> I, I feel so bad for them. But, yeah, the, like, this season is very much the epitome of, like, shonen action. Animation-wise, at least. Yeah. Because, like, it has some of the best fights I've seen, period. Because, holy shit. The, those the the fight animation like pop off. I remember like uh, when it was confirmed that uh, Sungwoo Park uh, was not coming back for season two. I was like re really worried because mm -hmm. like that's what like really made season one like the 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 fighting animation. But like I don't know the name of the new director here, but like he delivers. Like he does a really good job of like doing the fight choreography and also just like the big bombastic. Uh, visuals. His name is uh, Shota. The main director is Shota Gosho Gosho Zono. Yeah, mm -hmm. but I mean, I want to say it's it's a team effort. They have a lot of people working on this. Um, yes, Map is really. They know it's their cash cow. Um, so yeah, this guy has mainly done a bunch of key animation for a lot of really good shows. Um, like he worked on Mob. He worked on Fate Grand Order and Osama Ranking and Chainsaw Man as well. So, um. Worked his way up to it. Clearly, did a good job on this one. Yeah, if you, if you're into shonen, obviously you are probably already watching Jujutsu Kaisen. But if not, the yeah, fucking do it because this is probably it was also the just, best shonen it was also so out much. there right now. Like they covered such a long stretch of stuff, you know, all the way mm -hmm. from the flashback arc i can't remember the, there's a name for that arc but um uh hidden inventory hidden inventory there we go um and then transitioning to shibuya which is the quite shibuya a incident uh, quite a transition uh logan and tim either of you got thoughts on this bad boy um i wish i could see it without the screen dimming um, wait for the blu-rays uh, buy the blu-rays <laughs> buy the blu-rays i guess um 
yeah. playing Pokemon. Or or Japan could just give more give more children seizures. That's what I'm saying. Give That's them what I'm seizures. saying. I don't care. <laughs> a little seizure doesn't hurt let, no one. Let, let They'll be children fine. have seizures. All right. <laughs> But, they don't even flash um, anymore. Like that's no. the weird part. Like none of them were flashing. <laughs> mm-hmm. But anyway, I I I thought that hidden inventory was incredible. I think that it's like the peak of the JJK anime so far. Uh, maybe more so than Zero, even though Zero, I don't know, Zero was probably that before. Um, and uh, yeah, I'm sad that you know some of it got marred by the screen dimming and so forth. Um, but I think that there is a lot of really strong action in this show, even in the back half. I do think. Um, that the Shibuya incident just kind of started to drag at a certain point. Um, it, it, I get that it's supposed to be this big monumental event in the manga, but especially when you kind of put it through the ringer of anime pacing, um, it, it felt like it was just kind of going on and on. Uh, like, especially towards the end when, like, you know, a lot of bleak stuff starts happening. And I'm sure Chris is going to come in to complain about that here soon. Don't spoil the um, fun. <laughs> but I, my, my problem with that wasn't necessarily that, like, bleak stuff was happening or even that too much bleak stuff was happening, but that just too much stuff was happening. And I was kind of ready for this bit to be over. Yeah. It's so a we little. Can move on to the next thing. It's a little. Uh... I don't know if oversaturated is the right word. It's like a, a little sensory overload. If you watch so many mm -hmm. high octane fights back to back to back to back with like zero break, it's a lot of emotional mm -hmm. intensity and no downtime. Um, mm -hmm. Tim, yeah. how about you? Oh boy, I have a lot to go. Okay, well hold on. If you're if you're gonna be a hater, to if you're gonna be a hater, then maybe I'll I'll segue into hating first, and then we can talk about it. Okay, okay. I'm look. I'm turning my chair backwards. I'm sitting down in it. I'm addressing you. I I'm saying sport. I love you, <laughs> JJK. <laughs> I'm saying this because I love you. Um, I, I, I have to do this, and I hate having to do this. This was a great season. I gave it an eight. I think specifically hidden inventory, like Logan said, is the best JJK has ever been. I, I, I found it to be deeply moving. I thought it was sad. I thought the characterization of Gojo. I think. Gojo and Ghetto's backstory is so tragic, and and what happens with the girl is extremely sad. I think that uh, what's his name, um, uh, Megumi's dad, is Koji. a really yeah yeah he's a really interesting character, hottest man to ever exist. Um, it 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 is just a perfectly little a perfect little slice of anime, and the action was phenomenal. It it was amazing. Um, which is why I am very sad to say that I think Shibuya falls really flat in a lot of ways that I was not expecting from a show as good as Jujutsu Kaisen. So, first of all, th things that I am not going to be criticizing in this segment. The visuals. I think that a lot of the fights, especially the, um, the Sukuna and uh, whatever. Maharaga and Jogo. And Jogo fight. And then the one after, uh, yeah, you know. the Maharaga. Maharaga are some of the best fights ever put into anime uh, visually. I think they are stunning, and they were a delight to watch, and I'm sure I'll be going over them for your endless stuff. Um, just just kind of the peak of Shonen Spectacle that you can get. I think, basically, we had lots of fights like that. I think the, the Itadori and what's-his-name fight before that was also extremely good. Choso. Yeah, Choso good. versus Yuji is yeah. one of my favorite F fights. Phenomenal. Um, I think... And, th and this is where my core complaint is going to really kick in. Jujutsu Kaisen, to me, always differed itself from a lot of the other shonens that have been coming out. But both the classic ones like, you know, Naruto, Bleach, etc. And more recent ones like Demon Slayer, Chainsaw Man, even to some extent. Um, maybe not Chainsaw Man, I'm not going to bring that up. But like recent ones. It, it has always been about character writing. I think its character writing has always been something that I personally have loved about it. It has this big cast of characters and it makes you love a lot of the characters very quickly. Um, I think that Itadori is an incredible main character. I think I like his approach to how he lives his life. His like philosophy moving forward is really interesting. Um, and then he's just surrounded by this excellent cast of characters that we've spent a lot of time developing. Um, and especially after that break with Hidden Inventory and with Zero from the main cast, it 
really is a little bit lame to immediately go in and basically not get very much screen time or development for most of the characters because it's just all fights and it's fights for the whole way through. And the only character that's really getting developed is Itadori, and the only development he's getting is trauma. And <laughs> it's just, it's one thing, I don't know, man. You, you have Suka to take over and go on this rampage and kill millions of people. I get it, that was inevitable, sure, whatever. Like, Gojo got stuck, it's bad, it's, you know, you have to up the stakes somehow. And then you kill Nanami, and you're like, Okay, well, that sucks. He was one of my favorite characters, and it sucks because the way he died is kind of lame. But, like, you know, you gotta really <laughs> push in the trauma. And then immediately after, you're gonna kill Nobura, a character that has had next to no development since the early parts of the season one, and who has had no screen time in ages, and is a fan favorite character, too. Just completely unceremony. You get this, like, half assed, like, backstory exposition character, and I, I'm 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 still mad. I'm sorry. I'm still mad about this death. I think it's completely unnecessary. I don't think it does anything to develop the story. Um, I think she was a great character that got truncated for like no reason. I think there was plenty more of her story to tell. She had a really interesting approach. Her family had an interesting backstory. I don't know. It's a bunch of shit. I'm still mad about it. Either way, I just I don't think turning your anime into a octagon fight festival for 20 episodes straight is a good way to write a show i don't i think you really miss out on a lot of care the what what has made jjk good and again this is why i say this out of love because i really do love this show and when um i'm gonna i am so bad at names uh is it to toto the big guy toto, uh, i wear toto yeah when he showed back up it was like a fucking breath of fresh air i was like oh my god we finally have some fucking like two characters that I enjoy watching interact or getting to interact again. And that was like the first time that it happened since Hidden Inventory. And I was like, bro, thank God. Finally, some good, good eating here. Um, I'm hardly saying that JJK is bad. I'm not saying that it is like, oh, it's fall. It fell off or whatever. But I did have to rate this season a little bit lower despite, which feels so fucked up for me to do because of how good the rest of it was like how good execution wise the visuals were is just the the character writing and the narrative has just been a little bit weaker in a way that i do not think is how it's been before which sucks because again if you split hidden inventory into its own ova i probably give it a fucking 10 and i have and so it's, I, I do it's, think hidden inventory should have been the movie not not jjk zero i think zero is fine as a movie you could have made them both movies but yeah if if in, hidden inventory is a movie i think i give it a 10 it's literally the best the show's ever been and so I, I was not the biggest fan of Shibuya aside from the spectacle. JJK Zero probably should have made season two because there's a brand new character we didn't know anything about. It feels weird to make him out of Saint alone. So I think Hidden Inventory probably should have been the movie. But yeah. Um I kind of basically agree everything Chris said just now. Um this may not be like the nicest comparison to JJK, but like the Shibuya arc specifically feels a lot like um the Demon Slayer Entertainment arc, where like the main enjoyment, actually the only really enjoyment I got out of both of the seasons was like the entire show was just like one giant long ass fight in the uh, Demon Slayer season. And this one's also kind of the same thing where like the Shibuya arc, the things I really liked about, all the things I liked about was just like the really well animated, cool, over top fight scenes. And while in, like, Demon Slayer, that was, like, basically non-existent writing, so it didn't bother as much, in the JJK, it, like, the writing actively made me, like, dislike the show more. Like, Chris was talking about, like, oh, you know, all the main, these all the same favorite characters dying, which I think is, like, a really lame way to kind of, like, invoke trauma or, like, raise the stake of a show, especially because I feel like, like, that Nobu especially, like, had a lot more to give to the show. Um, I think I mentioned this before to the other guys, but I think adding like a flashback arc right before someone dies is incredibly lazy and bad writing. It's kind of basically the author's equivalent of like, oh, oh shit, I didn't develop this character enough. So I'm squeezing something last minute to make you feel something for these characters. Um, so I do am not a fan of the sh Shibuya writing, but I, I will agree that the, the fight scenes were like, 10 out of 10, some of the best fights this year. And the hit in inventory was, like, flawless. So, like, I don't have much to say about that. 
do you guys think if there was like another arc before Shibuya incident that you would like it a little bit more? Like that, that would like develop. The I think if Shibuya what? was the closer towards the end of the show, and we had gotten maybe another full season of development for especially Nobara, maybe I could have justified it more. I think Tim was really spitting when he was talking about giving characters flashbacks before they died. I think it was like I said. I I think Nobara's death is kind of pathetic. It's I just think it's the worst part of the show by far. As a manga reader, I, yes. Yes, it is. It will, Nobara dying this early makes no sense. Most of the writing did not help the show, in my opinion. Like, none of the character interaction in Shibuya was, like, engaging or, like, expanded my enjoyment. So even if there was, like, another season beforehand, I think another season beforehand would have made, like, the deaths more, like, I think accepted. But, like, I still think I, there was no... Yeah. Too little writing in Chibi. No, itself. it really was just a series of events happening. I just I don't think most of the villains are whatever in Chibi. I'm just going to be honest. Sukuna is, with the exception of Sukuna, who has had a lot of development outside of this arc. I just I don't think that Mahito has ever been the most compelling of villains. I do think his death sequence and the way his arc ended was very good. I think that was a very good episode. Um. I just don't think he makes for a very consequential villain, to, and he's kind of the only one left at, outside of get, the fake Ghetto, who is not a real character. I'm sorry to say he has ha to, to, to introduce like, oh, this has been a scary magician that's been alive for hundreds of years, and he's secretly the one controlling the screens, the, the puppet strings the whole time. It's It's kind of a last minute like development. It just means... It's not bad, but it means that we basically have no familiarity. It's like a new villain just being dropped in at the very end, and you're just kind of like, okay, well, I'm not invested with this guy at all anymore. Right? It's I mean, not like, th this is this is his introduction, really, and like, and he's like that's the big the bad now. The rest of the manga is is what it's about. It just means like, that there isn't, I, there aren't as many narrative stakes in the Shibuya incident when it all boils down, except for the destruction and and how bad it was, and I mean, like, that's something that you can do but it just does it feels it ends up feeling a little cheap at the end of the day you know what i mean mm -hmm. i don't know i forgot we didn't mention this during the podcast but like i do have a lot of guys with mahito as a character i've because, also like, never it, liked him yeah uh, I, 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 I think kinda, both of you guys are smoking crack i, I think i, I liked him at villain. the beginning but like i thought when he mentioned beginning because like when they introduced him it felt like he was going to be like the big bag villain like one of the main like well, he's not dead, he's off, so, he meets... I mean... Or no, he but got... Like, yes, it, he is. He got turned into a... No, no thing, yeah, Mahito's yeah. dead. Yeah, it, yeah, it felt like start. they were trying to build up to be this big antagonist character throughout the series, but, like, as the, sh the, the show went on, he quickly became more and more, like, like a, a side, like, joke villain. Yeah. And I feel like they really raced at him from, like, between season one, season two. Um, I don't think they have any really good villains, like Chris says, other than... Uh, yeah, Rip, I don't Rip think Jabo. Kind of really even a villain. I mean, he's definitely Dude, a villain, but... I mean, he is a villain, but he's not, like, an active villain in the show. I mean, he will be later, like, I'm sure. But I, maybe at the very end, but, like, right now, he doesn't feel like a, a villain that well, the Who's? I've been, I've, or, been, yeah, I've been spoiled on some things, but I'm not gonna talk about... <laughs> I, I have zero spoilers. You guys will not spoil me. Okay. Uh, wait, what, what villain were we talking about just now? Sukuna. Okay. Anyway, yeah. I think that... I don't know. He's relevant throughout the entire series. We'll see. He's relevant, but he doesn't feel like the antagonist, like the villain that they're constantly fighting fighting against. So, like, I'm sure he will eventually. Whenever he like, I mean, that's what the next arc is all about, baby. But like, yeah, for now, like, he's just kind of yeah. Itadori. We'll see. Shh. Either way, I, I don't know. As hyped as this season was from manga readers, I oh, also I think a lot of manga readers are cite this as kind of when the show or when the manga starts getting a little bit worse which is unfortunate um i i don't know mixed mixed feelings for me i still think it's good it's not a bad show i would obviously recommend it to everybody but i am i am disappointed that a show that i loved so much went in the direction that it did and i'll keep it at that um a little bit bummed about how about how this one not not for me, baby. I'm I'm still dick riding now, all all the way uh, downtown. Yeah, I mean I oh, don't know. Oh. Maybe you should 
Maybe you should consider these things. I mean, at least you admitted the Nobara thing was bad. No, but... dude, I, I hate the Nobara thing so much. And, like, I want to talk about a, a spoiler, but, like... I, I, uh, for the uh, record, I just want to say this right now. There is a very high likelihood that Nobara is going to not be dead. And I want oh, to th emphasize... That's, a, that's what pisses me off the most, Chris. Oh, no, 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 no. I want to emphasize that even if she comes back to life, all of the criticisms I have about it are exactly the same. Her coming yeah, back no, to life does not fucking matter. Exactly. It's still a terrible decision. Yes. Like it was it I cannot believe that Nanami just died. It was like in fiction within 20 minutes. It is I cannot believe Oh no, they did in that. fiction it's like 10. Yeah. Is I cannot believe they did that. Anyway, we can end. We can stop talking about JJK now. Um but we need to, this is going to be a spicy one. This is a little bit of the Chris versus Juan episode, but it's okay. Sometimes you got a little, you got to have a little. Like, I don't know if we can ever really stop talking about. JJK Maybe I'll make a civil war over. poster for this. <laughs> yeah, one. yeah, a civil war poster for, for this thumbnail. <laughs> Except I don't know if I feel comfortable putting you on the side of Tokyo Revengers, knowing how much you hate the end. So. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, um, I mean, I still defend this arc, the arc, in which general. was dog shit. Hey, I hated that way more than this. Um, and I'm uh, I'm okay with that. So. No, this was still, this was still, I mean, I, I always, like, just for hidden inventory alone and the fights, I think this is worth watching. And I think a lot of less critical Shonen fans are going to slurp this one up. Mmm, yummy, yummy. Uh, even oh, this is going to destroy the anime awards. Um, which is boring, uh, but, oh well. Anyway. I mean, uh, it, it's uh, except it's not, already. except it's not, except it's not, oh, no, it is. Is it eligible? God, I hate that show. I don't, don't want to talk about say. it. They didn't say. They didn't well, say no, it yet. is because it's summer. It's summer, but they're gonna count yeah, the whole show, even though. Oh, you're right. But they're they gonna are. count the whole show because they're fucking. So it's, it's gonna be JJK versus Chainsaw Man in the and next. Bochi Crunchy the Rock. Rewards. Oh God, I want to shoot Dude, myself. Anyway, yeah. uh, we hate the Country Awards. The, hey, don't watch the Country Awards. Yeah, watch, watch our show. Our, our awards that we're gonna have. We'll, we'll on talk the about all the shows. We'll probably talk about most of the shows we just talked about. Well, the good ones at least, and and more. Um. I, I suspect that we will not talk very much about Dead Mount Death Play at the Anime Awards. Or no. uh, fucking 16-bit or whatever. Uh, no. Okay. That's the fall season. Um, we were maybe a little long-winded in getting around there, but that is how we felt about all these shows. Uh, overall, pretty excellent season. Especially if you count the ongoing shows, probably one of the best seasons in a long time, actually. Yeah, no, th this was a very good season. Holy shit, like, like we didn't even talk about Fry Rent. And we didn't talk about Kusuriya, and we didn't talk about Shangri La Frontier. There are a lot of good dude. Uh, uh, next year is going to be tough. Yeah, so check out our uh, winter anime review where we will be talking about the conclusions of all of those. Um, but in the meantime, we better see y'all asses at my Twitch stream, or if wait, not, wait, wait, but but uh, not, not, we're not ending yet because we got to do our top threes. Yeah, I know. I'm just saying. All right. Let's oh, let's wrap it up. Please. I haven't thought about that at all yet. So Juan, yeah, if you're so confident, I, I, no, I always <laughs> I keep forgot mine. We we're gonna do this. You guys always oh, forget God. to do top threes. Well, top three is usually easier for I me. I do it I live. I, I do usually do it live, but like for me, like I, I was pretty easily when I was writing my notes. So for me, top three. I'm the biggest JJK dick writer here. Obviously, I'm gonna be recommending JJK. Uh, second, Pluto. Fuck, dude! This is probably like one of the most like compelling shows you'll ever see on TV, except it's not on TV. It's on Netflix, but whatever. Uh, and third, Hyakano, the Hundred Girlfriends that really, really, really love you. Damn, you put that if over you, Zom. If, you, if you like harem comedy, it's, and it's Scott good. Pilgrim. That's crazy, dude. I I really had like okay, Scott Pilgrim will probably be number four for me, okay. but Hyakano, I just gotta emphasize how All much right. fun I had with that show. I'm going to go three, two, one. Number three, Scott Pilgrim takes off. Uh, actually, I take that back. Number three. Mm, yeah, never mind. Number three, Spy Family Season 2. I have, what, what an excellent adaptation of one of my favorite segments of the manga. Um, I love your, I love everyone. It was so good. What a great time. Uh, number two, I'll say Scott Pilgrim takes off. Um, just an absolute joy. I cannot believe I still, when I try to think about it, it's kind of like Sora being in Smash Brothers. I, I have a hard time believing that it's actually real, but it is. Science Saru made a Scott Pilgrim show. Um, and then number one is Pluto. I just think that it was a fucking monument, and I cannot believe that something like that intricate was made. It was, like, we, we didn't talk about it, but, like, 
it felt like watching movies. It was like eight movies, really, mm-hmm. just because the 45, like the 50 minute like episode length. They were so long and you had so much time to sit with them. It was really impactful. Logan. All right. Uh, so my third slot is probably the hardest. Uh, I have been sitting here thinking for a while and I think I am going to give it just barely to Spy Family Season 2. Really? Um, Hell yeah, brother. Yes. Just barely. Do not hold me to that for any award shows that may be happening later this month. Um, <laughs> and then uh, number two, I'm going to give it to Scott Pilgrim. Like Chris said, it's kind of unbelievable that it exists. Uh, and number one, uh, Pluto. I'm so glad that this manga got the adaptation it deserves. Wow. What so a great list. Same I would list say, what a great list, Logan. <laughs> what yes, a sexy yes, list, actually. Exa- <laughs> <laughs> yeah, the difference is that Jujutsu Kaisen is way closer in the number four slot than it is uh, in yours. I think, I think JJK is probably number five. I think for me it would be Zom and uh, Zom 4, JJK you, 5. And it's really Zom close. Zom over JJK? Mm. I got hurt. Mm. I got hurt one. I like Zom. <laughs> uh, maybe we we should do this of a war thumbnail here. For, for me, Zom is easily number three over JJK. I, I I mean I expect that from no Tim. Contest. The, the Tim was do I have to put Logan on one side of the Civil War chart? I don't, know. <laughs> I don't want that to be true. I'll, I'm fine by myself. I don't give a shit. I'll fight all of you. I can I can handle each of you single handedly. Thanos. Uh, number. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, sorry, we'll go with him. Yeah. Number two is going to be Kage. It's a personal favorite. It itches something inside of me. I have so much fun with it. Um, and then number one's going to be Pluto with the rest of you normies. Yeah, because I'm sure Pluto's Just... a really normie show. That ever no, normies... I'm pretty sure not many people know about Pluto. I feel like yeah, we're going to be show. We're going to show. We're going to show up to a convention, and everyone's going to be dressed in Pluto cosplay. Hell yeah! And it's just normal clothes. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> I'm gonna show a brown, a tan cosplay. suit. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> just wear a yellow hoodie just and wearing wearing a suit. <laughs> All right. Okay. Hey, get, tune in to our anime awards. Though, yeah. On if the, on if the you thought we were long winded here, <laughs> we're, we're going to try so you hard wait. not to look, do seven hours next look, time. We promise. I can't actually make fail. the promise. We will probably not. It will probably not be as long as it was last year. Probably. Minimum it, four hours, it, though. That it is, will be I, long, but that's okay. You don't have to watch the whole time. The VOD will be up. But this is, again, I think we'll, most we'll of our... Stamps. It's like our favorite thing that we do every year. We love giving awards. It's a great way to recognize all the great shows we watched. Um, across 2023, there were some bangers. Man, I don't even want to start thinking about what's eligible. There are so many shows. Uh, but we'll get to it then. Uh, in the meantime, thanks for watching, and we'll see. We will see you at the award show, and then after that, the next one. Make I sure think. to like, comment, and subscribe, so that oh, way yeah, you true. know when the the vod is up. Exactly. I think the next one after the awards is probably going to be the mid season check in, um, where we go and talk about all of the winter shows that we're watching and checking out. All oh, right, that's, that's yeah. true. So mm-hmm. until then, we will see you guys next time. Later.